Okay, hello everyone. So how's the sound? I hope it's good. Let's bring the mic up. Very good. Okay, uh, so I'll get started. Um, just to talk about the present situation, um, it's a bit weird to me because just to go back a few moves, at this point, I was going to say, um, I was going to say that the fact that White did not play a forcing move towards the corner indicates that maybe White's just going to sacrifice the right side. So the idea here is that White could have played something like this towards the corner. Um, and if White had done that, White would have been committed to moving out here. So White would be jumping out or um, doing something like this. So once White plays the exchange of one or two, one and two, then White is committed to saving that group because otherwise that exchange becomes bad. On the other hand, when White played here, I was going to make an example of how White could be thinking of sacrificing the stone on the third line. So, for instance, I would say maybe if White plays away, so like the left side is big too, and Black ends up capturing that, maybe White can still uh, play some forcing moves from this side to get something extra towards the bottom side. So it's, it's not as if it's a game-changing thing, but there is some extra potential there to get some stones towards the lower side which will eventually be good for white. Um, so yeah, something like this maybe. Um, so in this case, white would be sacrificing that stone on the third line and, and white has not wasted the potential towards the lower side in this case. So that's what I thought was happening here, but then white covered it. So that changes the story from what I had expected into something completely different. So once black has played here, now these two white stones, um, they're pretty important. So so I added a stone um, which would be inside black's territory. So for instance, if we go back to that same variation there, uh, now these two white stones would be inside black's territory. And uh, so uh, this stone on the fourth line especially would be increasing black's area there, and it would be bad. So now white's sort of committed to move out. The usual tesuji is to play an attachment here and to get this, this kind of shape. So this, this would be the usual way to move out. Um, this is sort of a, a weird tesuji. I think we're, we're here already. So when white plays this, again, there's the fact that if white moves into the corner, then this move that white has played on the fourth line here, um, will be inside black's territory. So to, to make an extreme example, something like this, um, white can live in the corner with a ko, but those two stones, like black would just live it, let it live probably. So play something like this, allow it to live. Um, white's played two stones inside um, black's territory. So that's probably not good. I say it's not good for white. So in actual play, uh, Black is thinking about this move. Um, it's probably going in this direction, but again, it's going to be a trade of the corner for these two stones. Or maybe Black is... Um, I sort of doubt that he would play this one um, because the cut here looks... The cut here looks a bit annoying. Looks like it could be annoying. Um, so... But Black could consider this one. So in this case... It's going to be more like this. Um, this, this. I think black could do that. Either this way or this way. So this would be a strong way for, to prevent white from making eyes in the corner. And it would be a big fight. So there's the cut here. Um, looks exciting. Whatever. So that's the present board position. Let's get back to the game. And yes, black is thinking about that move. So it was a kind of a um, a slow opening. So let's go back to the beginning, and it looks like it looks like he's going to be thinking about this move too. So we'll go back to the beginning, and Black invaded here. So this actually, in the end, it reverted to a, what I would call a normal opening, 
where um, if black had played an open corner and white had played one, um, black can do this. So like if black does this, it's pretty likely that white's going to play the 3-3 three, three point also. So playing the 3-3 three, three point first and dealing with the 3-4 point next. So like old style, um, in the old style, white would be playing here first. But um, it's it's not unusual to be playing the 3-3 three, three point first in modern Go. And, and deciding how to play a Kakari next. So this order of moves would have been very normal. And it, actually at this point, Black would also have the choice, of course, of playing um, one of these Kakaris. Or a move that we, especially if White plays this one on the star point. We're seeing more and more of this move, which is a corner enclosure from the 4-4 four, four point. Where we used to play a corner enclosure from the 3-4 point. Um, it's just people don't like to have white invade the 3-3 three, three point there. So this is pretty common um, opening that we can see. So playing the 3-3 three, three point first was unusual, but it reverted to what I would call... Well, it reverted to a popular opening anyway. So I would call that normal, I guess. Yeah, so it actually it's a mirror position. So white could have played a corner and closer here too, but white chose to play a kind of a Chinese style opening. Um, so like if white had played here, it would have been copying black. So maybe he didn't want to do that. Um, perfectly valid move, of course. So yeah, so it's so a Chinese style. Uh, when white plays that move and black plays here, this left side uh, White's move in the center of the side is an overextension. So we're going to be ex expecting Black to invade on the fourth line at some point. So Black could have done that immediately. So White plays here. So Black could have invaded. Black could have invaded here. Um, the invasion here is always a, a point. Important point. But he played here first, and White played here. Um, even Black's extension, which is, if we compare White's extension with Black's extension, Black's extension is one line closer to the wall. Even in this case, you do have to consider the potential of white invading on the fourth line. So that's and that's still a thing, even when it's um, closer. So yeah. Uh, and by the way, uh, for those of you who were here from the start, um, you probably got an hourglass somewhere in the five first five ten minutes um, when my system crashed. So um, so I was offline for a bit there. Um, for those of you who are watching from ten o'clock Japan time, so that's one hour ago. Um, Dennis, too. That's an interesting question, but actually, there's no no rule against playing mirror go. Um, and so white could have played the same moves. It's just that sometimes it's, it's just not satisfying for the players. So especially when you're white and you're getting paid six and a half point, it's, it's the rules in this game, it's, um, it's a Korean tournament, so it's six and a half points, komi. Um, and that's still a big komi. So um, proceeding with the same opening or a mirror position Theoretically, it should be good for white. It, um, of course, the game will be decided in the middle game, but in even uh, position, um, my my feeling is that it makes it difficult for black to capitalize on having played the first move. So, um, so white could have done that. He just wanted to play something different. Okay, yeah. So I, 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 my system is, I rebooted, and my system, I hope it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so black invaded. So yes, so playing the Hane here and the hanging connection. Okay, Leonardo is talking about mirror goal also. Um, it used to be frowned upon, but, and people still don't find it um, interesting, like, Professional players 
generally feel that we're obliged to do something in entertaining, not only just winning, um, but we like to play something that we think is, to a certain extent, original. And so playing mirror go is less satisfying. It has been played. Um, there was a famous Japanese player several decades ago, uh, Fushisawa Hosai, who claimed that his game with white was bad anyway, so he played mirror go sometimes. Um, and that was a period where a number of players developed various tricks to, to destroy mirror go. So there are some Joseki variants where a ladder is involved where you can um, destroy the mirror ball. The game is live right now. Um, and they have three hours apiece. And I believe it should be um, five overtime periods of 40 seconds. So um, this server is showing it as 60 seconds five times, but it's probably 40 seconds, if I recall correctly, in the LG Cup. And this is the second of uh, three game best of three. Uh, Ding Hao won the first game a couple of days ago. So when White has played the Hanging Connection here, um, Black has to play the Tari. Otherwise, like if White gets to play this point, then it's as good as a live. So it's alive already, and it's taking away a lot of territory from Black in the corner, and it's reducing the stability of Black's group there also. So it's it's a very important point. When black plays here, um, now there's no point for white to connect here because this would be an eyeless shape and black had, um, has defended the corner. So white plays away. And the idea is that getting this one uh, stone at uh, B B15, the one stone on the second line here, is going to work towards the fight on the side. Hmm. That's a good point, Rick. It, it could be. Um, I think that actually the the size of the board um, with nine. I think it had something to do. People um, talk. It, it's not really documented, but it could have something to do with um, some religious kind of thing that. Uh, had to do with the birth of go boards themselves so the, the whole grid of 19 by 19 could have had some um some uh some special meaning astrologic meaning that um is not really very well documented of course because it was so far in the past but people do like boards with odd numbers of um lines so that is true and especially at the small sizes, some weird stuff does happen when you have an even number, like um, the smaller boards. Yeah, they're, they're sort of special in that way. Okay, so black jumped out. And here, white um, could have continued the fight on the left. So... Um, I showed this move before. This, this is a way of sort of reinforcing this. I should talk about the white move there first. Shouldn't I? So this move here, um, a common shape would be to play here. So white could have done this. Um, and black's probably going to connect in this case. And white can jump out. So and then white's going to play here anyway. So white emitted the exchange of one to four. And for the time being, white's okay with that, because if black plays here, white can push through, and there's no way for black to cap uh, save that stone. So that stone is going to be captured. So uh, locally, it, it sort of makes sense for white to peep on this side, because jumping here is a, a big move anyway. And so the jump at three is, you might say, it's the perfect move to reduce the value of black's solid line of stone. So that's why white plays the peep at one first to reinforce uh, the corner side. And then it's perfect timing for white to jump at three. So if white jumps at three first, then it's conceivable that in some uh, cases, uh, let's give black a forcing move on this side too. So in some cases, maybe black's going to find a different way 
to, to defend the cut if white peeps at some later point. And so it makes sense for white to be peeping first before white jumps, in which case if black plays here, um, well, either way, uh, this is in itself, it's reinforcing white. So now white's not going to need that stone at the jumping point. It's going to be a different move. So it's a kind of a shape where white um, does want to reinforce the group in the lower left and can do that with one peep before playing this big move. So this is the way white could have continued the fight on the left. Um, maybe something like this. So this would be a relatively calm way of playing. Instead, white jumps into the right side, which could make it a bit wild. So here, okay, this is the board position. So let's go back. So actually, black answered white peep by playing here. This is the most dangerous move. So this is the variation where I think that the exchange of white covering on the fourth line here with black cut um it could link up to for instance a cut so let's see is this the final move no white played a honey and cut so this cut here um it works with the two white stones on the side so for instance if black plays something that's not a direct atari or anything then this is already a collapse or this way it's, a, it's going to be a collapse anyway Uh, if black cuts here, this is still going to be involved. So like, for instance, if white plays here, white will be able to capture this stone. So white can find a way to make that happen. Um, so that's so that's how the it's sort of working. It's coming together. Uh, the exchange that white played on the side and this fight in the corner, uh, they do relate with each other which makes it sort of difficult for black. Um, for instance, if black plays here and then plays on this side, then we still have issues with white threatening the ponuki here. And if black escapes, again, it's going to be this tessiji. So um, at some point, black might sacrifice the one stone on the fifth line, but you can see how it's sort of linking up to the corner there. And so white's going to get something out of this. Okay. Ah, yes. So I missed that, Leo Leonardo. I wonder what the AI does if it's mirror, mirror go. And, you know, um, in general, AIs are pretty bad at refuting mirror go. So that, that sort of links up to what I was saying before. Oh, Freddy is asking about the time controls. That's three hours apiece, and they have overtime. I think it's uh, five times... Uh, 40 seconds. So it's going to be a long game. I was talking about AIs and mirror goal. Um, so when mirror goal was played by this one prominent player um, several decades ago, his opponents devised a number of ways to set up a ladder. Um, and so they started with relatively popular josekis and they they could uh, make a ladder variation so um that's something that people were doing and so like you have a ladder if your opponent copies you throughout the whole sequence then you have a ladder starting in one of the corners you might say the top left corner and a identical ladder starting in the lower right corner and then being one move ahead means that black will finally the ladder sort of class in the middle of the board and black finally plays the center point the tengen to capture the one ladder and save the other so um when the ladders are pointing to each other like that white has to stop copying black at some point and if it gets too far into the game then it's a huge disadvantage for white so people devise these ways to refute mirror goal in fact there was actually a famous game between kitani and gosegen where they played mirror goal 
And there was no Comey in that game. So they decided that Black had a three-point advantage in Mirrorball. So that, that was their conclusion after playing the whole game. But there are, the, um, in that game, I think it was Kitani who had Black, but he didn't use the latter approach. And so they played um, a kind of a Moyo game almost up to the late middle game. And then the fighting started. Okay, so this sort of reverts to what I was saying at the start, where I was saying that I, I think that White was sort of committed to saving these stones when he covered here. So this is a move that is going to be killed when, and, and when White does something like the game. And so I, I, I was thinking that once White has played this, White's sort of committed to, to moving out. So this would be a way for White to try to escape towards the center. I think it it should be, this group is going to be okay. Um, this move is, um, it has a lot of nuances of being an attempt to sacrifice the White Stones on the side sometimes. And I think that's, that's something that I would do without this exchange. So it's just really bad. So um, I really would just go back to this variation, for instance, and say that this is much more, my feeling is that this, this is much more the right idea for white, this kind of idea. Unless white is going to save everything, in which case we go back to, to white playing here and here. So it's a, a, it seems un, uh, a bit forced, a, a bit um, unnatural, the whole sequence here. Um, where black is going to protect the stone on the side, so maybe something like this, and white will be able to live in the corner. But white has sacrificed a lot towards the side, so uh, all, of, all three of those white stones, they're pretty much wasted. Not completely, but they're, they're sort of wasted. Okay, so yeah, white does have to extend here. So if white had just lived in the corner, that would have been... Uh, white does need an extra stone in the corner to be completely alive. But if black gets to play here, that gets rid of all the bad Aji towards the right side. So it's probably just bad for white. And so the Aji I'm talking about, potential, is at some point white can play uh, this move. So if black goes down here and white plays here, this would be a ko. And this is actually, Black is winning this one if we ignore the situation in the center. So Black can win this way or this way. Um, but of course, yeah, there's this problem in the center. So um, so there is there is some Aji with, with the kick there. Just this in the corner. It's just that I'm not sure that it's going to work right now. And White's corner is not alive yet. So White has to sort of work that out. Yes. Well, not for the laughs, but they wanted to see how it would turn out. Um, we'll say again, especially, I think he was, well, he was clearly a genius and he improvised a lot. So he was... Uh, quite often trying new stuff. So here, white does ultimately have to add a stone to the corner to be alive. But he can't really afford to be... Can't really afford to just do that and allow black to dominate the center completely. So white does want to, to get something towards the center here.
Mm -hmm. Jackson Fitzsimmons. Would Gosegan learn to play the AI style, or would he develop a method to beat other humans who emulate the AI style? Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, he would, well, he was actually playing some moves that um, the master version of AlphaGo played also. So it was a, I, I was getting the impression that uh, there was some essence of Gosegan that somehow got into AlphaGo there, um, even though it wasn't using his game records um, to create the the weights or the neural network. Um, he would probably um, adapt it to his own style. So he would um, be starting with the... Com AI style and adapting it to something that we like to play, which is, um, it's, it's what players, top players in the world are doing anyway. Um, just, just about all of them. They're, they're working with the AI style, um, but just blindly, uh, playing the suggested moves is not going to be good enough. So your opponent gets that information also. So, um, working with that and creating an opening that they're happy to play is or that their opponent doesn't know anything about um is probably the artistic part of it which is true um other professionals also but i, I would say that's probably what gosegan would be doing white is looking at the clamp at um r13 and yes it does require that white has some pressure on the outside black group otherwise it's just not going to work So, for instance, if black were to answer this directly, yeah, I think white does need some preparation here. So, like, let's see, let's do it on this on the board. Oh, yeah, let's do that. And you know, I um, still I think the outside position is pretty important. So maybe. Um, maybe if white can sort of surround from the center and should be satisfied if black is eventually forced to, to add a stone like this. So this would sort of, this would uh, link up to the fight on the left side of the board. And conceivably it, it becomes less important for white to live in the corner. So black can kill that with this move. It's really big. Um, but when the surrounding black stones are alive, it is just territory, so it's, it's slightly less than 30 points, maybe. Yeah, yeah, he's probably not going to do it this way, but maybe up, uh, up to this point, and then, then living in the corner would be a bit more reasonable. Um, something like this, maybe. I think that uh, the center tends to be more important and the clamp at um, R13, uh, where I'm pointing to right now, that's probably kind of a secondary threat that um, White's best chance is to be able to force Black to defend against it like this. Playing it too early would just be like, it would be ignored. So that would be for instance, this variation, where this would not actually, well, black would probably leave it here, but it's not, white's going to have to end up in the end living the corner anyway, so like, uh, let's see, maybe here. Probably more important to, to dominate the center as much as possible. Okay, uh, so they're actually doing this. Now oh, the push on the other side. That the, yeah, the push on the bottom side. Um, probably pretty important also.
Mm-hmm. That's right, Rick. Master did have human games. Um it was before zero, yes. So it did have human games, but not I don't think they actually chose professional games. I just think they took some um relatively strong amateur players games actually. Um it's not exactly clear what games they chose, but I think someone told me that at some point, that they were not actually professional games. Okay, Daryl Bangerter is asking, will we expect Black to invade the top later? And that's uh, way later. So like the present fight in the lower right area is very prominently important. And so it's, it's, it could be the decisive fight of the game. Um, after they've finished that, if it settles down a bit, then probably the focus will change to the left side. So on the left side, both sides have a weak group. So, uh, so there's this black group here, um, this black group, let's see. Ah, okay. I do this and you can see the pointer. So it's this black group, um, on the left side, which is not alive, uh, doesn't have two eyes yet. It's not exactly weak, but um, if it does eventually die, it's going to be pretty big. So there's this black group, um, which is going to be the focus of the next fight after they're finished on the right side. And there's also the fact that this white group in the corner, in the lower left corner, is not alive yet either. So if at some point, for, for now, black has to play here, but if at some point black can play a move like this on the right side, locally white is not going to have two eyes. So there's that, the fact that both sides have a weak group make the fight on the left side here pretty important. So just basically. And so the difference between that and uh, the top side is that on the top side, white doesn't have any weak group. So there's this corner enclosure, which is alive in itself. And there's this upper right corner, which is alive in itself. And there's a lot of space in between, but when black goes in there, it's not going to have any potential to attack any white group. So that's why it's a kind of a secondary, um, well, it comes after the left side too. So the, the right side, the lower right area is most important, and they're going to continue playing for a while here. And then it's going to switch to the left side if they do it um, in an orderly way, like it gets messy sometimes. And then finally, the top side is the, as far as sides are concerned, it's the lowest part. Of course, sides are pretty important. So um, it come, it does come in that order. And of course, the bottom side, like uh, when black plays it, it's probably going to be automatically a territory. So it's, uh, there's some value to that. It usually comes in relation to the fight on the left. Right, the O11 group is sort of important. It's only important as long as white can play some forcing moves against against this black group here. So yeah, I'm so in, let's go back to the game. Oh uh, yeah, they did play for few moves. So black extended and white pushed here. Um so I'm I'm sort of expecting white to get into that variation where white pushes at least once more and is going to try to sort of and circle black from the center, after which, um, for instance, yeah, black's not going to play four, but uh, for instance, after which this becomes a real threat. So this would be uh, trouble for black. So white is creating a position where um, he can at least hold this in for the time being. And so the white groups on the outside are going to last longer than the black group on the side. Although white's in danger too, black's in more danger. So 
So um, playing something like this, uh, yeah. So this is the the game move. And um, so suppose white forced black to play three. Um, the moment black plays at three, uh, there's no value to the outside white stones now. So the value of white's outside stones reduces uh, very sharply because black has added a stone at three. The fact that this black group, the black territory on the right is pretty much established now makes all of these white stones relatively small. So like if white plays, uh, continues, if black even does something like this, there's always the potential that white's just ignore it. Now, once black has played that move at three, the value there is much smaller. And the same goes for, for instance, moves like this, um, which might be able to capture four white stones. It becomes less important. The one big move in the in theory is black playing here, which it actually captures the corner. So that's that's something close to thirty points. So a kind of an orderly fight here would have white playing here, black defending, and white probably has to defend the corner. So um, this way, um, these various ways of defending it are all sort of equal. White might try something like this and try to get the extra Atari here. That might be a bit better. And it could lead to a bit of a fight. Because black might counter with this. So yeah, I'm not so sure about that one. Okay. Could black respond to that push towards the corner instead? So uh, we're, oh, with, we're talking about the last black group move. So um, black has extended here. But if black had played uh, something like this, locally this does kill the corner. It's probably going to be a bit painful. So like th this in itself would be a bit painful. Uh, white does have this extra forcing move. And um, white's going to dominate the fight here. So like a, a variation, something like this. Um, white's getting something back on the side. And so like... White can probably even get an extra forcing move here. So it's one of these. So it's probably not worth it for black to kill the corner in this case. So like that was... Um, it's le is, Because black had to add all these extra stones, it's more like 25 points. And the side territory has disappeared. White got an extra move or so towards the center. So it's it's not worth it. So I, I agree with black playing here. And here white is threatening R13 here. Pretty close to what I was suggesting. So yeah. So this is where like the safe move would be to play there. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. The safe move would be to play here. Anyone can play this move. Like we know we um once you realize that white is threatening to do this and would be threatening to do this and this would be a co which could potentially kill the whole black group or white might actually let's see white plays it from this side Yeah, well, it looks like black can win that. Hmm. So maybe not. White will probably play the call. So it's a problem for black anyway. So uh, just looking at that, it seems like this move jumps out at me. So this would be the easy way to play. It's also not the most uh, active. Right. So that's what Rick is saying here. Can black jump out? So playing playing a move like this or like this uh, would be the resisting move. Uh, black does have to be careful of uh, shortage of liberty. So like if black does something like this, black shape does have a pretty bad shortage of liberty. So like if we do it something like this, the black group is going to lose this semi. -out. So for instance.
and next it's going to be an Atari. So you can see how quickly Black's Liberties fill up. And it's just the, the shape there with all those empty triangles uh, already. So it's like this empty triangle here. It's a shape that's easy to get filled up in Liberties. So Black does have to be careful about how he does it. So for instance, something like this and then backing up here would be one thing to do. Or, or the attachment here might be a stronger move. I don't know. I don't really think it's going to be all that successful. But um, it could be an idea for Black to at least try to get one cut in. Um, something extra towards the center um, before defending could be an idea. Oh, hello, Alexander. Right, bamboo joint and cut. That's exactly what I'm doing here. Yes. So if black simply answers here, that's the safe move. But like I said, once black plays here, all of the surrounding white stones, uh, they lose a part of their value. So after this, whatever black does to try to threaten white on the outside, it's not going to be so forcing. So white's, white's going to be answering on the other side. So it makes sense for black to want to, to, to do something here. Yes. So it, whether it's going to be the jump or the attachment, maybe, um, it's hard to say. So that that's what he's... I'm sure that's what he's thinking about, though. Yes, exactly, Rick Rubenstein. I think that the players are sort of Homogenous. They're, they're all playing um, moves that are liked by AIs. So it's very difficult to talk about styles of players sometimes. It's just that they're, um, the amount of research that they need to play their games um, has increased just because of the fact that they have reliable answers uh, with, um, with computer programs. They have computer programs that can give them judgments on positional judgments that are reliable uh, much more reliable uh, than we had from the greatest players of our time so like the legends of the 20th century uh, they would give us judgments but we didn't really know if they were right or not so sometimes we didn't believe them and sometimes they were just wrong uh, it's not so true. I, I think that the AI judge, positional judgments are much more reliable. And so it means that they have uh, kind of a textbook that they can start with. And they have to figure out how to use that in a way that their opponents won't be ready for. Or in a way that will be uh, a valid way to counteract the similar research that their opponents have done. So it's it's less... It's less of a style thing now, because there's maybe, in a way, there's less guesswork in the opening. Okay, there's a number of AIs, they disagree with each other a number of ways. So, like, first of all, AlphaGo, um, it's a different thing altogether, because um, the... All of the modern AIs that we use now disagree with uh, a lot of the moves that the master version played, or even AlphaGo Zero. So there's there's differences there, and there's differences between programs like Katago and um, programs like Fine Art, the Chinese program. And there's a number of Chinese programs actually, um, and well, the Chinese programs are a bit less, um, they're, they're more difficult to, to get access to. They're less accessible. 
because you have to go to a server and input moves and you get a something like a 10 move variation but you can't really uh, play around with that you, you just have to get what the computer spits out um, whereas with AlphaGo you actually have it I have it on my own PC so I can I can force the computer to make a variation for the move that I want it to make for him and then I can change the moves and I can play around with it that way so that, that's what makes Katago better for me um, also the fact that it gives um, a territory score as well as um, the win win loss percentage type of store of score um, so that that makes it more easy for me to understand what's going on sometimes so it's okay that they disagree and actually in the present time when AIs like Katago and fine art disagree um fine art is really strong so i would tend to believe that fine art is correct actually um even though leonardo likes kato i think that actually fine art is probably better but um the difference is small enough that it, um i don't think i don't think i have to worry about it. it's not a level that human players really have to be worried about um, just because the computers are, um, they're that well developed. They're, they're so accurate that, like, they're talking about fractions of points early in the game, like in the opening. Um, mistakes, they point out mistakes that have lost some fraction of a point. And when you average out the the playouts to get a winning percentage, it's, it just turns into a fraction of a point, something like that. It's not a, an, an amount that humans bother about at that stage of the game okay so uh daniel chiquito um actually a good point but sort of misunderstood what i was saying there uh is saying why isn't it a good thing for black if the white stones become less valuable so that's just the way i said it was not maybe clear i i was talking about the liability that white has in regard to those stones so when white plays here white has invested a stone it means that if it gets captured, if uh, any of those white stones get captured, to a certain extent, they'll be wasted. But um, the moment black plays here, uh, white has exchanged a stone on the outside for a black stone on the second line. So as far as endgame is concerned, that black stone on the second line is relatively small. White stone in the center of the board is going to influence fights towards the center. So once black has answered at one, um the value of black capturing white stones is decreased because when black captures for instance um in that variation where white plays here and black plays here it's not realistic black's not going to cut there anyway but in some variation like this for instance the value of capturing these stones is reduced by the fact that black has wasted a stone at, at one and so that's what i was talking about so um because of that the white's liability here in the local fight is reduced and I said that uh, the value reduced, so that it, um, so that was what I was trying to say there. Okay, so that was unexpected, um, but this is going to be trouble for White if White leaves it. So, uh, say White plays here. Let's see, how, how will I do this one? For instance, if we get into this variation, and um, with that black stone, which is marked with a triangle, the, the last game move, it, it does put white into a shortage of liberty. So like if something like this happened, um, so let's, let's just make it relatively easy to understand, and black plays here, uh, this looks like it could be trouble for white. Actually, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. So something along these lines is what black is aiming at. So I think it looks a bit unreasonable for white to just leave the, the position in the center at this time. And I would expect white to be adding a stone here, so something like this. So one of these two moves, I, I sort of think the jump looks like it's a good shape move, but it might be more solid to extend.
Um, or white could try to find some other way to defend. Here. So I think that white does need some kind of defense move in the center of the board. Okay. Um, Jackson Fitzsimmons is asking, after China, Korea, Japan, and Taiwan, uh, what country has the highest percentage of people who can play Go? That's a good question. Um, for one thing, it's difficult to get numbers because people don't play face-to-face um, -face so much anymore, and they're playing on the internet. So, like, it's it's really difficult to get uh, solid numbers for the number of players, um, even in countries like America or, or in Europe either. I think that everyone is playing on the internet now. Um, and it makes it relatively difficult to get numbers. So like we used to have people playing in face-to-face -face tournaments. And when you organize them into a national uh, organization, then you, you could get numbers relative. You, you, at least you had a number to give people. Um, but nowadays, those numbers are probably pretty, um, um, they're not so significant. So yes, so uh, TLS is talking about Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore. So um, I was going to get to that, actually. Um, Southern Asia is really, um, like when I came to Japan uh, several decades ago, um, I'd never heard of Southern Asian Go players, but um, there was this huge boom in Southern Asia all over. So Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, they're, they're all getting a lot of strong players. Um, I'm recently, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they have a, a larger number of players too. So like, um, that's a pretty large area and um, Go is getting very popular in that area. And so it's probably, probably that, like, um, but like I was saying, with AIs to teach people, uh, people don't actually have to travel to Asia to get strong. When I was young, we didn't even have internet. And there was no way for me to get strong without coming here. So that, that's a big difference. So the fact that you can get, you can stay at home and you have a great teacher if, you, um, if you're young enough to sort of absorb all that information that the computer is giving you, or at least absorb a lot of it, then it's, um, I think people in America or Europe, anywhere in the world, have the opportunity to get strong now. And it, it's, it, it, it's a way that will help not only the strong players, but it will help spreading go uh, throughout the world. So it's, it's getting a bit more um, fuzzy in that way. So someone else was talking about Smegel. So um, the question, uh, yeah, so that's Leonardo started that. Um, my theory, like, um, they're classical or, or classic Smigel selections, which professional Go players are supposed to study, and we all did. Um, and some of those problems are extremely difficult. So there's a lot of uh, Hatsuyoron or Kanzufu or um, Gengen Gokyo problems. So I'm, I'm, th those are all Japanese pronunciations. There's some of those were actually ancient Chinese um, collections of problems. Some of the problems in these collections are extremely difficult, and they take, um, they could take tens or hundreds of hours for a professional to understand to get the answer. And so they're extremely complicated. And uh, what I always say is. The reason we're supposed to do those uh, for professional players is because um, it's helping our concentration and our ability to hold a image of the goal board and actually move the stones around on it and remember the original position and do all sorts of stuff 
just um, in our mental uh, image of the of the board. It's something. It's a training that enables us to have more reliable um, calculation or um, faster and more reliable calculation. So it's actually not going to make your game stronger if you're an amateur player, or if you're a, even if you're a dime ranked, uh, a reasonably strong player. Um, having problems that you can't get to the answer with is usually quite often I think it's a waste of time. So actually, there are so many shapes and common uh, problems like the life and death problems that I put out as um, as videos that are actually not so difficult, but um, most players are missing them in actual game play. So there's a level of missing the problem um, where maybe you can get it if you have the exact situation there right for you. So like if it's a problem, it's all set up where um, if it's black to play, black plays the key move. And so that's it's set up so you can play that as your first move or something because the person who um, constructed the problem wants you to get that that move. And so it's all set up for you when, when it's a problem. But in a real game, um, maybe you have a few more moves to, to get there. And so be, to be able to be seeing these problems as they, as they come, before they actually uh, appear on the board, see them coming. So like, for instance, this, this white position in the corner, to be able to, to know that uh, this, is, um, this is a position where locally, if black plays here, if we just look at this white group locally, it's going to be dead. Or if black plays here, white's going to be alive. So actually, this is the position. Um, uh, yeah, I won't talk about the professional who, who messed up on this one. That, that was the one that Rick found for me. <laughs> yeah, that was embarrassing, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, being able to recognize these as they come is uh, very important. And so doing relatively easy life and death problems that you can solve maybe in a few seconds or half a minute, I'd say a max of two minutes, is where your mind is still working and getting you towards the answer of the problem. Um, I think that you, after a couple of minutes, you tend to get confused or you're going back to the, the first move you thought of. And it's... A lot of friction so um, in, in a way it could end up being wasted time so I think that it's okay to see the answer to look at the answer uh, for amateur players so like that's really like um, if you have a pure viewpoint about life and death if you're a real fan of that then you might be shocked but actually I think it's okay for most players to, to look at the answer after a couple of minutes and then be sure to go back to that problem sometime in the future so there's this idea of um, learning by repeating. So you you um, you wait until part of your memory is gone, and then you can try to solve that problem once more in a couple of weeks or something. And it's in real game situ situations that you're gonna make the mistake anyway, because in a real game, no one tells you that it's black to play and white's gonna die or something like that. And your opponent's not gonna tell you that. Maybe your opponent doesn't even know that. <laughs> so um, so you have to uh, start from scratch. And so you have to have a very good ability to be able to see these things happening. And it's something that repeating the problems a lot, just doing a lot of easy problems is much more valuable in that way. Even for strong players, like even for pros, um, I think I, I get something out of even doing those easy problems that I'm setting up for you in my videos. Ah, uh, yes, uh, well, no, it was, it was three hours uh, a piece. Oh uh, yeah, Will Melville, that's a good, uh, Mel Will Melville, excuse me, yes. So that's a good question too. In programs with longer time settings, is it common for the main time to be used up? Usually, yes. Um, yeah.
they they will probably go into overtime um so most players like to have some extra time um to to play a good in in game um and then they use it up in the end game if it's a close game relatively leonardo like, like there's um compare them with the classical uh selections and you'll think they'll easy they're easy so a case where the time would be left left would be if it's a one-sided game and then then the players might play more quickly towards the end Okay, so it's sort of ambiguous whether this push is going to be forcing, but it does. Um... Oh wow! So it does uh, alleviate the position in the center. So like, when White has pushed here, then stuff like this, White can hang hang together in the center. So um, looks like there is a threat here on the right side when White does that. It could be the code, like the code, um, the code would be exciting too. So TLS is, uh, there's a Korean, the Korean KB League switches to Fisher time and it switched to Fisher time and there were a lot of timeout games. Fisher time, I'm a fan of Fisher time. So Fisher time is where you have a relatively small amount of time to start with. So the basic time is small. It can be almost non-existent it doesn't matter because every time you play a move you get a certain amount of time added to your time so like for instance um assuming you start with zero if you play a move before your time runs out yes exactly if you play a move before your time runs out then that can add for instance um any you can choose the the um interval so it can be 10 it can be a minute it's added to your time every time you play a move um, it means that if you have a relatively easy position where your next move, um, is like if you're fighting a co or something, or if you have an obvious move to play next, then you can play that immediately and your time increases. Um, but if you have a difficult position, then all of those moves that you played relatively quickly, um, can be, you can use that time. Um, to find a good move. And so there's a lot more flexibility in the way the players can use time. And the problem with the traditional Yomi thing, the second reading, where you have to play one move in 60 seconds, or in this game I believe it's 40 seconds, you have a given time to play the one move, and even if you have an obvious move, it seems wasteful to play it in one second because the rest the other 39 seconds just disappears so there's a tendency for the players to want to use most of that 40 seconds to think about other parts of the board um and it's a waste of time basically because they're not thinking so efficiently it goes for it creates a situation where the players are thinking less efficiently if you ask me and so i uh, that's my problem with the traditional Yumi system, which is um, basically it's wasting time. And so you can use Fisher time, you can give some basic time, you can give um, more time um, increment. So every time the players play a move, you can give them, uh, you can choose how much time you give them. And so they can have a total of the same amount of time. So it could be the same six hours plus overtime. Um, so this game could go on for seven or eight hours. You could have the Fisher time set up to give them the same amount of time. Um, but um, it's going to be more efficiently used. Uh, Pro Go Baduk Weichi Podcast. Thank you for the, the, um, the support. Ah, yes. Fuyan Bian. That's a tough question, though. Okay, so uh, Yang Dingxing 
accused. You might recall my last uh, live broadcast was Lee Chuan Hao against um, SGS, so uh, Xin Jing, so that was. Um, and Lee Chuan Hao, he um, played an excellent game. And so it was almost flawless. And Yan Dingxing was, I think he was his opponent in a previous round. And there was this suggestion that maybe Li, Li Shanghao was using an AI. And so it was a, an accusation there. Um, and it was really about Xin Jinso's game and also a previous game that he had played against Yan Jingxing. So, um, so there was this accusation, but he couldn't justify it apparently. So he, um, there was no uh, no proof. And so actually it turns out that Yan Jingxing was penalized for that. And uh, they, they couldn't find any evidence that Li Xiaohu had done anything wrong. So that that's the bottom line. I think really the um, my feelings about that is that we have to formalize a way for this to be done because it was sort of messy that the, the person who called him out was penalized for doing that. And so it's, um, it's going to quieten people who have suspicions and there should be some uh, that it should be better organized so that these key, these things can be investigated. Uh, I think maybe people got a bit emotional about it at that time. And to talk about Li Xuan Hao, I think he was like he had a whole um, about a year maybe of of good games. So like he was, he was, um, it wasn't as if he was suddenly extremely strong. He was, um, pretty con consistently getting better. And so, um, if you look at his, um, success throughout the last year or so, I think it makes sense that he was playing a good game. It didn't really, it, it, it shouldn't have been all that surprising. Okay, so White has lived in the corner. Um, and if Black Black probably wants to cover on the second line, White might just be playing that one exchange, because that exchange does make it a bit more of a nuisance for Black to try to kill the corner later. Yes, yes, I would say Lee was in the zone. Okay, Leonardo, I, I don't know if Leonardo is making a joke or what. So yes, Fisher Time was, the, the idea was from Bobby Fisher. So it was created for chess and it's, I think it's the main time system for chess tournaments, for professional play in chess now. Um, and Ryoyomi is actually a Japanese word, uh, which direct, directly translates to second read. So it's it's not someone's name. Yes, I think there's a couple of Malaysian players who made pro in Japan. They're pretty strong, too. Well, yes, um, there's probably a better description of Fisher time on OGS because they use it there. 
and there must be an explanation somewhere. So there, um, when you play a game on OGS, you can choose to have uh, Fisher time controls, and just the the act of choosing how to do it will probably make it clear how it works. That would probably be a better explanation. Okay, so when black covers here, yes. So there's, this is making it relatively difficult for black to kill the corner. So what I'm talking about here is the move that black tends to want to play is cutting to one stone. Uh, but this is a lie. So um, white's offering to sacrifice that one stone to get a living shape in the corner. If black plays here anyway, black can kill it, um, but it's a, a lot more annoying. So it, it does, sometimes it links in with this move. Sometimes white just simply plays here, and uh, this shape, it has a lot of liberty. So like, black has to play two more moves inside there, and it will then be eight liberties. <laughs> so it's black, white has something like ten liberties here. And of course, black's going to be in trouble on the, on the outside. So whether white plays here or here, um, this is going to be bad for black. So black would lose by something like five, six moves here. W would lose the race to capture. And so if we compare it with... Um, if we compare it with black playing here and killing the corner, uh, it's there's a lot of difficulty associated with black trying to kill the corner so that's how this honey is working of course if black hadn't answered it that way then white would have been able to squeeze like this so this would have been like where white would usually have only five or six points in the corner this is already more than 10 points and the four stones are the cutting stones so black has answered so white would get an extra five points in Sente and would be taking several points away from black. So it would be really big. So that's why black wanted to answer that. And it's why white just played one honey. And this makes it relatively difficult for black to kill the corner. So like if black had been able to, so like in a variation like, like this, uh, let's do a variation like this. Um, and so let's say, yeah, a variation like this. And then maybe like this, where black has um, securely defended the bottom side. In a variation like this, then it wouldn't make so much difference. So like, even if white plays this exchange, black would be able to uh, kill the corner anyway, because black's group on the side is secure. So it's a position like the game position, where black's group on the side was not so secure, where it becomes significant. So this is actually uh, working with the move that white plays on the fourth line on the side here. Okay, Jackson uh, Fitzsimmons is asking about school. Um, all I know really is about Japanese rules. That, like there's um, there's uh, public education that's mandatory. But, uh, uh, in Japan, it's just up to middle school. Um, so there are some players who finish middle school and then stop going to school. Um, there's also some go players who went all the way to university. So there's some well-educated Go players. Um, there's some Go players that um, have different jobs also. So they're doing double jobs. So like there's, um, for instance, there's a, a lawyer who is also a Go player. He was a Go player first, and then he went on to um, 
to be a lawyer also. So there's people like that who went on with their education, but it's in Japan, their required public education is up to middle school. So that's nine years. And that's all you have to do. Um, I'm not sure how it works in China. China. Um, there are schools that teach them to be professional goal players, and I think they're recognized as public schools also. So they have normal classes, different classes also. And just because China is so competitive, you do see a lot of Chinese players um, being very successful in their teens before they're 20 and so and then sort of burning out so i i do see a lot of chinese players burning out it's because um it's so competitive and there are a lot of young players that are coming up to challenge them and so um i do see a lot of chinese players who are successful up to a certain point and then they go back to college so or back to university and so they become some of them have been very successful in in their business after retiring. Well, they don't even have to retire from Go, but they sort of go into semi-retirement. So although I'm not sure what the system is um, with public education in China, um, probably a, a large percentage of Chinese Go players who go back to school after being a professional for a while. So the value of playing this exchange for black, not only is it giving black eyes uh, on the bottom side there, but black will be able to get this forcing move in too, which means that um, uh, that that uh, the um, this move here, uh, to a certain degree, it's disappeared because black and ass are on this side and white won't be able to connect underneath. Black still does have to um, um, deal with the potential, the potential um, race to capture. Locally, blacks blacks go okay here. So like, um, that was probably this is probably the clean way to capture. So like this, or like this. It looks like, yeah, maybe white can try. It's just it's not quite working. Yeah, so black wins the race to capture here. So there is some um, some meaning in, in playing this. Not only does it um, reinforce black on the bottom, but um, black getting this, this honey here, it's, it's important. I can't ver verify that, Hanamaru, so um, wouldn't be surprised, though. Okay, so uh, the corner, let's see, that's 10, 12, 14. It's, it's uh, 20 so points, so it's, a, it's bigger than 20, but it's smaller than 25. Aha. Uh -huh. So here, White has started the the co threat thing uh, before living in the corner. So like um, like I was saying, if White plays here, Black gets the honey here, and that for the most part it resolves Black's problem on the side. So that was Black's idea. And so White's played this one first. So in this case, uh, White was going to die in the corner. Uh, but like if Black did this, uh, if Black did this, 
locally white's just dead in the corner but white can start the coal here or can try to squeeze from the center um, in this case white's probably going to lose by one move but yeah so white's going to make the trouble for black first and then decide whether depending on how black replies maybe white's going to sacrifice the corn so that was the idea here black just took the three stones in the center so do whatever you want so just connecting underneath um probably not such a success for white because if white connect well it would cost one more more move anyway so black would just leave it but um white white and then we'll have to play here anyway so um otherwise if white plays this way white can start a call uh, and again if white loses the call the corner is going to be in jeopardy and so black's the marked stone here, the, the triangle, um, takes away black's liability by capturing the cutting stones. Uh, it's a relatively easy code for black to be playing. White R19. That it does work locally, but white has to decide this the shape on the right side also. Okay, Dennis too is asking how do gold players earn a living if they don't make prize money? Uh, it sort of depends on the country. Uh, the organization that is. Uh, so, like, and um, there's so many Go players in China. There's so a lot of strong Go players. You really have to be at the top to to make a living, I think. But then it's very good. They're very famous, well known. And then the players who retire, uh, they do have connections. So, like, um, it it helps that they are big names uh, when they go into business. In Japan, I think there's still. Uh, relatively a lot of teaching going on so if you're a good teacher um, maybe you can make a living with that Okay, so white plays in the center of three stones. That's a, a good shape move. Um, do I have a side job? Uh, well, nothing that doesn't have to do with go. Um, I guess I do the YouTube. So yeah, there's that. Um, YouTube in itself doesn't make very much money for me, but um, it does. Um, it does sort of introduced me to my Patreon, so it lets people know I'm still around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the testergy of playing in the middle of three stones. And that's what they mean. You're supposed to play it. Oh yeah, the Patreon link. Okay. Uh, well, it's pinned at the top. But I can, I can probably find it again. Uh, there we are. Mm 
Andrei, um, did I hide the board once there? I'm sorry about that. Uh, TV, not so often anymore. There's a lot of, um, when I was, uh, doing a lot of TV stuff, most of the title holders didn't like to, um, didn't like to do it so much. So there was a lot of room for me to be commentating on TV about the, for instance, the NHK Cup. There's, there's, an, there were, at the time, there were a number of TV tournaments. So I was doing a lot of that. Uh, but now the young title holders, they all want to be on TV. So um, there's a lot of competition. So it's it's less often. I just a, a few times a year. Right. Yes. So there was someone in Twitch also was asking about the um, drama about Yan Dingxing. Yeah, I, I I do think it was probably having a bad effect on him. The fact that uh, yeah he was penalized for uh, making that accusation. <laughs> Ryan asks, have I, have I watched Hikaru no Go? Actually, I read the original uh, manga. My my daughter was growing up at the time. And um, so we, we got her all of the comic books. And it was uh, surprisingly well written. It was a very good um, description of... And the pictures, the, um, the illustrations were good too. They were very accurate um, for some of the traditional buildings like the the go association some of the more old buildings that had to do with um with go so um i was pretty well i was impressed uh playing away is probably not an option the hane looks bad um i think black has a choice of uh curling around on the third line or just connecting on the right it's not as if Black's in danger of getting killed. So if Black plays here, this is sort of, uh, it's not very attractive. So after this, Black would, um, there, there would still be a co there if White plays. Ah. Where shall we have Black played? Um, sorry. That move was too bad. But yeah, this would be another co here. So there's a co here on the side. So it's it's not really finished yet. So that was sort of ugly and clumpy. I don't like it very much. So black could play here. And actually nothing bad is going to happen here. So this is alive as it stands. And it's the most territory. So this would give black more than 10 points of territory. Um, if black plays here, this would be alive too, but black does need one more move. Um, black would at least have the cut on the fifth line here in this variation. So black could do that or this, for instance. It would be very similar. And black could do that and be thinking of doing something a bit more active with the next move. Maybe killing white's corner, for instance. Uh, this corner is actually, it's not, um, it's not dead either. It's sort of ambiguous. But yeah, this would be threatening the corner. So what I'm saying here is that if white plays here and plays here, white can get a forcing move here. So it, it's going to lie, be alive when white does that. So that would live. Or if black feels liberty, this, this would be starting a co again. So that, that would be a bit dangerous maybe. So let's see, um, I'm back in the game, and he's thinking about it. Killing corners is good if it works, but if it doesn't work, it's uh, as bad. So you can see that that corner, black would like to kill it, but white does have that co on the side. So it's, it's not going to be straightforward. 
<laughs> okay, at some point here I, I have to um, get some lunch, otherwise um, I won't last to the end of the game. So I'm, I think I should um, take a break here. So I'll be back. Uh, why don't you give me, let's see. Okay, okay, so that's that's the variation I was suggesting. Let's just do that once more. So when black plays here, white can't really do anything that adventurous. It's just not going to work. So white's probably just going to be covering here. And by going down to the... Although this looks like white can squeeze it, it's, it's nothing special. So this shape is just... Even if white plays here later, it's still going to be alive. So, um, so this shape um, is still alive. So like the best that white can hope for is going to be a seki. Um, and that, that requires one more move also. So it's, it's not as if black is in any danger here. And it, for the time being, it is the most territory. So it, locally, white's going to play here. Uh, white could play a move on, on the top and be thinking of doing stuff like this. So this would be making a kind of a connection here. Um, a potential ko. Or if black backs off, uh, this would actually be pretty um, efficient towards the corner. It would be um, there would be some extra value there. So yeah, um, maybe white's just gonna go like this. In this case, black white does have to fix the shape in the center. So this was you might say it was the most territory grasping move, and it gives black. Um, probably about 12, 11 points on the side. And so I'll take a break now. I'll, let's say I'll, I'll be back in 45 minutes. So I'll change this. And we'll put the timer back up. And I'll be back. Uh, thank you all for um, watching the, the, live, the live broadcast. And I'll be back. So let's put the timer up.
Okay, I'm back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here black has started something on the top side. And it's not resolved the co on the right. So it's kind of a volatile position. Um, black would like to be able to kill everything, of course, but that doesn't really work out. So let's do that first. So if we just look at the lower left, the lower right corner, black can kill it with this, but of course it's this co here. And black doesn't really have enough co threats, so white has co threats here, which are probably going to be big enough. Or white could play this one first. Yeah, so winning the co is sort of tough for black. It's probably, um, and uh, like people are commenting, black does have a lot of territory. So you look at the right side, it's um, okay, let's do it with, yeah, okay. So there's about 20 points here, and if black captures this, it's close to 40 points in all. So like actually, if we count the three stones in the center, it's more than 40 points. Now black has about 10 points, more than 10 points here on the bottom lower right area. Um, close to 10 points in this corner, so it's something like 60 points already. And white doesn't really have very much territory. So if we look at the territory, clearly black is in the lead. So um it would make sense for black to be doing something like this and allowing white to live only right now uh black has started something in the upper left so uh white sort of wants to we have to remember this black group is in the live either so white wants to make a double attack and kill one of these black groups so there's actually some real possibility for that to happen in this board position so black maybe doesn't have time right now to connect so there, that's an issue um, he could have connected earlier before he crawled on the second line. So that would be to go back to that position. This was an opportunity for Black to connect. Um, and like, you know, when, when Black has the potential to go after everything with a co, maybe he didn't want to simplify it. Um, usually you don't want to simplify it unless you're winning the game. I think this is a position where Black does have a lot of territory. So maybe Black could have done this. In which case, um, in the corner here, even if black ca white captures the whole side, black can always can usually make a life in the corner with this sequence. So, like there's some rare cases in which this can kill it. Um, that would come much later. White would need more preparation to be able to to capture this. It's not going to work right now. And so white really needs locally another stone to finish off that black stone. And so this would be a time where maybe Black could have connected on the third line, finished the call, if Black wants to simplify things. And these players don't like to simplify it very much, so they like to keep it complicated. Uh, they have the idea that they're better at handling that. And so Black is continuing on the top side, and the point is, um, whether or not Black has time to connect on the right side here is sort of questionable. It's um, Black might just leave it for the time being. And it's a co after all, so it's it's not a big deal if white wins that co anyway. It's just that it would be simpler as a game if black could connect there. And it does look like black has a lead. So like if we look we looked at black's territory with something like 60 points, right? So white has, maybe now white has about 20 points on the top side. And maybe white can make 20 points on the left side. But it doesn't really have any other territory to speak of. So white has to count on getting some attacking potential here. There are two weak black groups. So if black plays something like this, for instance, and white plays something like this, uh, we do see some potential for a splitting attack. So when this gets started, the left side becomes important, and that co on the right uh, becomes secondary. So they're going to have to leave the co for a while and finish this fight on the left half of the board before they can return to the co or finishing the co. Territory is starting to look fairly well defined, with white having some territory in the upper left and on the top side, and black having the right side. So the territory is gradually firming up. Uh, 
both of those black groups, if we look at them individually, they should have no problem living. But when, when they're combined like this, when there's two weak groups, it can get a bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. Yes, so exactly what Chunky Gipple was saying. Okay, so that's the idea here. White has to continue the attack locally. Um, and, okay, so it's pretty much what I was showing here. And um, the co on the right side is pending. It's, it's, it's sort of on the waiting list now. They don't have time to, to continue with it. Okay, so black doesn't really have eyes on the top, and obviously black doesn't have eyes on the left. So both of those groups are in danger. Um, and it's the kind of position where an AI will say it's really easy for black to live or sacrifice or whatever. And black will be getting a winning percentage quite often, just because black has more territory. And frankly, it does look like it's good for black. But um, sometimes humans have trouble in execution. There's, sometimes it's sort of difficult to, to make living shapes for both of these groups simultaneously. So it does still depend on the fight on the left. If white can get a lot of profit out of this fight, even if white doesn't, like it's not really realistic to assume that white's going to kill something. So even if white doesn't kill black outright, um, if white can get some profit from this local fight, and then eventually maybe if white gets to win the co on the right, then um, it could become a fairly close thing. Uh, one problem that White has, of course, is that that position on the left side, it does look a bit vulnerable. Okay, Daryl is uh, Daryl Bangerto is asking how are players selected for tournaments like this? Um, well, I think the Japanese players were selected um, by prize money, maybe, or by their domestic rankings. Yes, and yes, so exactly like Anamaru Alice is saying, uh, sometimes there are um, there are uh, knockout tournaments. There are, 
qualifying tournaments um, to choose the players. So in the case of LG, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a qualifying tournament in Korea. Um, but probably maybe the Japanese and Chinese players are um, their domestic, domestic rankings. Sometimes the players are just chosen by the sponsor. Sometimes they're chosen by the ranking. Um, in uh, tournaments like Nanxing, where there, it's a team tournament um, with a extended period where the players have to be available, sometimes it's chosen by their schedule to a certain degree. And I would say that the domestic rankings is a pretty valid way of choosing people. It is what they're doing in um, their tournaments. Oh, Gareth White is asking my game on Monday. Um, I was thinking maybe I'd do a video about that. Um, it was a pretty bad game, but there was a lot of TSG and stuff like that in it. So um, it's probably going to be a fun watch. And I got lucky at the end. So yeah, I, I did well in that game. I mean, it ended well at least. Okay, so black has taken advantage of the weakness in white's position with this attachment. So I was thinking there was a lot of potential stuff that could happen on the left side. I was thinking maybe even black could try something like this. Um, it would be exciting, but um, instead black played here, and this is a shape move. So if white were to answer actively against this, so for instance, even this move, but including this move, then black has a cut in the corner, and this captures two white stones. So if white plays here, it's actually not a ladder because white has run out of liberties, and black gets to capture these two stones. So that would um, immediately make a living shape for black. So that would be very effective. And if this black group uh, gets two eyes like that, then the other black group will have no problem living. Like it's, even I could, uh, I can see that. So like some of these positions are a bit more tricky and you have two weak black groups and you can't really see whether they're gonna survive. But um, I think even I could pull off living on the left side, provided black got a living shape on the top, like, like this one. So this would be too easy for black. And of course, if black, white plays from this side, now white still has to connect um, to prevent this. So black would capture the corner. So again, this would be too easy for black. So that's, uh, that's why white was answering on this side. Yes. And so with this, uh, black has made one eye in the immediate area. So one eye right here and the potential eye on the top. So on the top, if black continues, so let's see. Uh, uh, so if black continues with something like this, uh, this would make a uh, second an eye on the top. So even if white were threatening to take away the eye in the center, if black just wanted to live simply, and not very likely in a real game, they do it more complicated than that, but uh, this one gets an eye with a potential second eye. So um, black would already be alive. So the only way that white could conceivably try to kill this black group would be to take away the eye on the top. So that would be um, maybe this move, um, or it could be more simply, it would be this move. So this would take away black's eye on the top, uh, but black does seem to have um, a potential second eye somewhere in the center. So. For the time being, it looks like it's close enough to being alive. Like it's not, if we made a huge wall of white stones around it, white would be able to kill. But otherwise, um, it's going to be very difficult for white to kill this black group. So that's what black accomplished with uh, this, ex this exchange here. So bumping against on the third line was, that was actually a good point for white to play also. So like I might have been tempted to play that move right here, 
because it does take away a lot of Black's eye space. If Black answers here, then um, most of Black's eye space is gone. Black does not have an eye on the side, and Black does not have an eye in the center. So that would take away Black's eyes. Um, White didn't play that, so it makes sense for Black to be playing that move. And making what is very close to a living ship. So, like, if Black is not going to give anything else, um, if it's not going to give away any points, then Black is, um, there's still some potential for White to kill it. So, for instance, if White plays here, um, in almost all cases, Black's going to answer this. So, there are some, there is some uh, remote possibility of it getting killed. But you can see, in some cases, black can be making an eye in the center. Um, and white's short of liberties on the side. And so there's a lot of uh, options that black has. It's going to be really difficult for white to continue attacking this group. So it's close to a lot. So that's why bumping against white here was a, it was a shape move. It was a vital point. Okay, so white's surrounded the side. And the question is... Um, what happens with the black group on the left side? E13. Oh, it doesn't look right. No. Okay, thank you, Daryl. That's right. It's pinned on the chat, and I have it ready here to copy to the chat anyway so just in case for some reason you can't see that i'll i'll put it in again surely someone will be interested and so that's my patreon okay so white's uh, pretty much surrounded black on the left side and black is either going to play fairly straightforwardly and try to make two eyes or black could still try something in the space um in the space here. So let's see if I can point to it. If I do this, I think I should be able to point. Yeah. So in, in this space here, there is a kind of a gap in white's territory. So it's still an area where black could be trying, uh, for instance, stuff like this, um, and trying to sort of lead into the black group there. So like uh, things like this might be an option in which black would be sort of threatening white's corner, but would be more interested in connecting up to the side. So this would start to settle Black's group on the left side. And in some cases, it would put Black's group on the top in danger again. So it would be a kind of a tightrope balance thing. They're really good at that, though. Top players. Um, I'd say that people at the top of the Go scene in the past, there used to be this superior positional judgment that top players had. Um, and they were... They just had a better understanding of the game itself than the younger players. And achieving this um, this understanding, it took several decades of dedicated study and play of the game. Um, and that has been completely abbreviated by the coming of AIs, which give better answers. They give better answers than the top players can give. And so everyone is learning from the AIs. And so the new top players, the young players who are at the top of the bull world now, uh, tend to be people, people who have researched their openings with AIs. And that's good enough for their positional judgment. So they're starting at the same point. And the strength of these successful players tends to be in the middle game fighting. Because if you follow the AI advice, then more often than not, you're, you're going to get into a, a vicious fight. In the middle game so that that's kind of a tendency that the ai um playing uh, goes into and so they have to have very um accurate um calculation skills and so players like this they're they tend to be fairly confident in their ability to handle groups like this black group on the left Yeah, so Cyphus might be saying that the black group is light, uh, light, which would imply that maybe he's maybe he's going to sacrifice a part of it, but um, it looks like he's just going to save everything. Okay, uh, 
time ago is asking how do they train with the AI. Um, review after the game is very valuable. And also uh, what these players do, what, uh, what almost all professional players do now, um, is they just research the opening because um, when um, because they, they just have to play perfectly in the opening. If you haven't researched very deeply with an AI, then um, it's very easy to mess up fairly seriously in the opening. Because um, if your opponent has researched with an AI, uh, you might say your opponent has a lot of uh, very good answers. So um, uh, knows what position is going to be a success and not. In a position where usually human players would not be um, able to judge that. And so they research the opening. So you just start with an empty board. What I do is I have Katago out and I would um, I would set up an opening that I'm thinking maybe I'm going to play. And I would just be um, playing around with it. Just suggesting moves and um, playing the computer suggested moves. And then some, sometimes forcing it to play moves that I want to play. And seeing how that turns out. Stuff like that. Okay, so this was not working. So change the thing. Okay, good. Memorizing is not good enough for top pros. So, of course they memorize it. And it's a huge amount of memorization, which is uh, clearly easier for younger players. So that there is that. But in order to be a, a world-class player, in order to be a world champion, you have to have a deeper understanding. So you have to be able to um, to find the right move when your opponent goes off the map. Because like the, it's impossible to uh, memorize everything. So you, you, there's a certain point where uh, you don't know what the computer move is. But if you have a kind of a, if your own interpretation of what this all is about, and what the meaning of that opening is. If you have your own interpretation of that, then you should be able to be, to, to answer it. So at the top levels, um, players like Shin Jin So, for instance, um, I was impressed by his his deep understanding, not, not his memorization of these openings, but his deep understanding of um, what his objectives were in, when he got into these openings, so what he was trying to do. And like, he's not here, so obviously, um, there's some other players that have been challenging to him. Um, but that said, um, um, he was the person who I was at first, the first person who impressed me in, in the importance of that. Okay, Black's not going to be able to break out, uh, but maybe Black can make some weakness in what's shaping. Once Black has played this, Black is pretty much committed to um, saving that Black group. So like Earlier, I was talking about um, Black doing stuff like this or like this, and uh, that would I would play that before playing these moves in the center because, like, if we assume something like this and like this and like this with Black's group in the center getting into trouble, the upper left corner could become relatively unimportant. Like, it's not as if the white group is uh, going to die immediately. So. It's a bit lit late for Black to be doing some stuff like that. And the fact that Black has played these moves in the center of the board sort of indicates to me that he's probably thinking of um, just simply adding stones to this Black group on the left. I'd say if Black can live with that, then like it's still like Black has um, a lot of territory. Yeah, so Black has more territory than White. And so if Black comes out of this unscathed, I think black has a lead.
Mm. That's an interesting question from Jackson Fitzsimmons, what the pros do to manage nerves during games like this. Um, I don't know. Like it, um, I think you get used to it after a while. When I was young, maybe I uh, had, had problems with that. Um, but basically, we all became professional role players because we enjoy the game, at least for the most part. And so, yeah, it's, it's not that much of a problem. Um, people do get uh, very tense or excited, you might say. Um, but when you're in the competition, like that's part of the, actually that's part of the pleasure. It's something that I like to a certain degree. Okay, who was asking about the clocks? Rob Shaw was asking about the clocks. They seem to be about the same. So on the server I'm looking at now, it says they're both uh, one hour and a few minutes. And since they started, um, you know, let's see, they started three, almost four hours ago. So it does make sense. Being scared of di dying is, it makes, that's reasonable, like, you know, dying is not, not pleasant. So clearly black is, um, surrounded, whatever white does, but, um, black is sort of asking how white is going to play the next move. So like wherever white plays, uh, there's not going to be any escape, but there's, there could be some Aji, for instance, like Black could be trying stuff like this, um, trying to get some extra potential. Like if White connects here, maybe there's going to be a potential forcing move uh, somewhere around here, for instance. So, uh, or even if White, let's say White pushes through here, um, there's going to be at very least some potential for a forcing move here. Uh, Black might actually start with the, this attack. At some point, I think Black's going to be playing this move to get some extra space. So that's going to be an exchange that Black can play to get some extra space. Hey, W Zhang, I'm, I'm sure that the prize money does make a difference. Like, it does make people, especially if the players think about it, um, I think once the game starts, they probably, they probably forget the prize money. Like it's, um, yes, people do choke them. Yes, that's true. But maybe not necessarily the prize money. It could be that they just don't want to fail. Like that's, that's, that's distressing enough. Okay, with this extension, White has removed, partially removed the cut in the center. So, like, before that, before that, Black could uh, play here and get this cut with Sente. So, uh, that's one tempo further away. Uh, so, now that uh, White has played here, the cut will be Gote. So, cutting here is, is much less effective because it's not forcing anymore. Also, of course, white is threatening to push through here for the time being. So black has to has to deal with that. This could be a problem. With that white stone on the second line, uh, it's going to be difficult for black to capture this stone. <clears throat> so like if black is going to directly uh, protect against that, black would be playing somewhere around here. Um, or somewhere around here, maybe. Uh, this, this move really get it, it's I'm I'm still sort of focused on this move. I think at some point Black is going to be playing this to get some extra space.
J15 J15 uh, well you know like if we compare it to the black group on the left cutting at J15 is not going to be enough so let's see it doesn't even work does it uh so so let's see uh, let's get rid of that for the time being so if um if black were to cut here um i would like to say white could just sacrifice three stones on the side but actually um black uh black is going to be captured so so it doesn't even work but even if black could capture these three white stones on the side um it's not worth it when black is about to die on the left side so it's, it's not something that's realistically going to happen um Actually, it would be more likely that Black would be using some kind of a, a peep, one of these peeps, to, to get, um, to maneuver around it. So, like, for instance, in this case, Black would be able to sort of connect up here and, and cut the white group on the left off. Or, in this case, maybe Black would be able to escape out towards the center. So, th this one is a bit more um, questionable. But, yeah. So, like, stuff like this, if we ignore the fact that black is not really well connected on the left, uh, stuff like this, or stuff like this is, this is probably more realistic um, thing for black to aim at. While the cut, in most cases, it's just not going to be good enough. So, like, white has any number of ways to make it not relevant to the group on the left, and the best way is just to capture it like this, because it doesn't even work. Right. So yeah, a peep using the cut is um is the way black will aim in. Yes. So in that way you were correct. Yes, I-13 seems to be a reasonable looking move. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah, played uh, W Zhang's move here. So yeah, uh, when Black does that, the question is, is Black connected on the left? Black's not really connected. Um, but yeah, okay. So um, let's see, I'll make a diagram. Go Proverbs. Cool proverbs, uh, you could find them in some of the internet archives. So you could probably um, you could probably find them on the internet just by searching. Although you might have trouble with other proverbs uh, popping up. 
or you could find them in the various Go databases. They're, they're, um, there's various databases on the net that will include proverbs, Go proverbs. So that's something you can you can find a lot, a whole list, lots of lists of Go proverbs. Okay, so uh, what I was going to talk about here is the fact that white can cut black off here. So locally, it is not connected. So like, um, at some point, white's going to get a cut on the fourth line. Uh, there's the fact that all of white's groups are in danger, actually. So white gets cut off here on the right, and this group has to escape out to the center, still has a cut here. So when this happens, now if we get into a variation like this, with the two black stones on the right here, you can see white's getting into trouble on this side. And even if white, like the, the corner is alive too, so like it's, it's not working in many ways. So like this would be a, this is going to be a complete collapse for white. Oh yeah, so white connected here. So that's what was happening there. Um, black cannot really break through in the center, so like, um, it's not as if it's opened it. So white can surround black here. Black does need to do something eventually on the, like any move on the side would uh, get rid of the potential cut. So that was the game move. All right. Okay. Um, Herat Dunkelbart is asking, um, is it more favorable as black or white if you are an amateur? So that's a... <laughs> um, even whether you're amateur or professional, uh, people have their preferred styles. So... If you're good at saving weak groups, then maybe you feel okay. But um, I'd say that there's a, a lot of players who would feel that black is just going to be destroyed in this variation. So like it's, it's um, I think it's feasible that some players would have trouble making two eyes. So for people like that, and um, obviously, it's distressing to be playing black in this forward position. But I think the players in this game are the type um, that feel relatively comfortable. And so they... Um, black probably feels like he's fine. Um, by the way, it, my um, people were talking about go proverbs here. So um, I just remembered I did a whole... Uh, playlist on Go Proverbs. So there's there's a few videos at least, probably about ten to fifteen. I'm not sure exactly how many I made. I made some videos about Go Proverbs. So the ones that I made videos about are still valid. And a lot of Go Proverbs are not really supported by the um, the moves suggested by AI. So there's a lot of Go Proverbs that you might say are going out of date. Um, so I chose proverbs that are still uh, still valid, even if you look at them with a computer. So I should go over to my channel and check that out. So I'll, I'll, for those of you who are not watching on YouTube, there's some people on Twitch, for instance. Let's see if I can give my channel link also. So yeah, I'll put it in here. Uh, obviously, the people watching me on YouTube are probably know where my channel is, but just in case, and I'll put it here for the the Twitch group. Yeah, so that should show people where my channel is. There's a number of uh, videos that I made about um, about Go Proverbs. Yeah. 
and the ones I made are valid according to AIs in the context that I made them. Okay, so black has fairly straightforwardly defended the cut. And so locally, black is in a tight spot, but of course the white group um, is not invincible either. So like, for instance, there's various stuff that can happen. So for for one thing, there's um there's this that can happen here and it could it could turn into a co so like this would be a co and there's this black does have the fact that black can capture this stone at any point and have a living shape so it's relatively difficult for white to kill the corner um and so this would be another example of that kind of fight where the corner can live at the last moment and white's going to be in trouble on the outside so there's there's this thing where if white plays here, black can cut white off. And there in the center, uh, for instance, like this, I think if black plays here, white's uh, to a certain degree white's connected up. So uh, maybe here and stuff like this. This would be an example of one way that uh, black could cut off white's group in the lower left, and um, eventually. Um, it would not just be the black group that's in danger, but the white group is not 100% alive either. In fact, it doesn't really have eyes. Okay, Wei Ji Liao, Wei Ji Liao gave me, uh, looks like, uh, coffee money. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, so, yeah, Leonardo is, saying, is asking how black can live. And I... Uh, to be frank, I don't yet know how that's going to happen, but uh, like I'm demonstrating here, sometimes it can involve the a weakness or the life or death of the white group that's surrounding black also. So there's there's some connection there to the vulnerability of the white group also. So white would like to take away some of black's space. So if white plays here, maybe something like this, um, or something like, like this. Um, yeah, I, mean, I sort of lean towards this, this move. Uh, White does sort of want to play something towards that. And so the issue is what happens when Black does this. So that's an issue that White has to figure out. Um, if White doesn't like that, White would 
play could play a move like this, but it's not going to be forcing. Black would probably just do stuff like this, and this would be relatively should be relatively easy for Black. Yeah, I think uh, Proverbs are really um, good in that they give you a kind of a human explanation of what you're trying to do, whereas AIs um, cannot explain why they're giving the answer that they do. So that does make it very difficult to sort of digest that kind of information. Okay, if Black lives without any real trouble, then the game is going to be good for Black. So it... it it's not really how many um, points black gets, but uh, whether white can um, yes, okay. Uh, how how much white can push black around here? So yes, that thank you, Chunky Gickle is asking for a, a different way to make donations, and so sure, I can provide that. That's a good idea. So I have a, a PayPal thing. I should be able to find it. Yeah. So if you want to support my channel um, without giving YouTube a lot of money, you can send it to PayPal. And that's my PayPal link. Okay, thanks for prompting all this, um, plugging my channel. So yeah, that's that's a good way uh, to do it more directly if you want to support my channel. Good night, Rob Shaw. And I have Patreon. Yes. So yeah, I, uh, oh, okay. I can I can give my Patreon link once more. Um, that's this one. Yeah. So this one gives you. Uh, gives you there's uh various tiers but the fifty dollar tier does give you a monthly uh teaching game on OGS. Uh so thanks for all the interest. Yeah so I think black's gonna live here and it's going to be good for black, but then they'll go back to fighting the co on the right side, which could be fairly important. So the, the, the co on the right side, maybe it's still a bit early for it to happen, but if white can get a strong position, and even if white allows black to live, if white can get back to the right side co. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, when AIs play it, it does get hard to hard to, hard to follow sometimes. Okay. Okay, so White's dealing with the potential co there. So after that exchange, I I'd assume that uh, Black's going to answer that. So let's say black answers here. And that's fixing this problem because now if black pushes through, now it's um now white can capture these stones. So it's either this or a net. Um or white can capture these stones. So by pushing through it, the marked stone, the triangle here, white has gotten rid of that weakness in white shape. And capturing these black stones would be really big. So like if black does something like uh, something like this, 
white gets to play here. And this would be another forcing move. So this kind of thing would be a lot of territory. So the white's getting something like 15 points on the side here. And black is still getting squeezed. So that would be um, that would be enough to make it a close game at least. Maybe good for a while actually. Yeah, so black answers that. And so white's connected now. And white has to find a way to attack black. So white still needs to have a fairly convincing attack continuing here. And we'll eventually probably combine that with the co on the right side. Thank you, Win PS. And still, we have to remember that White's whole group here is not completely alive. So like in this variation that I was thinking of, and uh, so like this, and it's going to be something like this, maybe. And something like this. You can see the white group is not completely alive either. So that's that's something that black is going to be uh, hoping to make. Get some mileage out of. <clears throat> it's pretty scary for white also. Okay, Michael Go thirty three sixty one is asking what happened to the story where several Chinese players accused Li Shanghao of cheating. Uh, Shanghao, I believe it's pronounced. Um, I'm not sure about his pronunciation. So, um, they couldn't prove it, and so um, they didn't have any proof that he did so. And so white does still need a convincing attack here. Okay, if white is not trying to reduce black life space in the next move, is there a way for black to live inside? So that would be white playing something on the outside, maybe? Something like this. And if black plays here... I guess white has to play on this side. So even something like this um, should be good enough to make two odds for black. So yeah, I think there is a way for black to live inside. And actually, you know, black is probably going to mix in moves like this, which make moves like this sort of 
semi-forcing in a way. You know, it's sort of um, like if white jumps here, this is already an issue with a, a potential co here, but there's also the fact that white's liberties are filling up. And so like you would see stuff like this would be a co or a black could squeeze And it would be very easy for black to live, even though white captures the three stones. So, like, this would be an example of black squeezing white. Actually, maybe this way. Whatever black does, he's going to have enough room to make two eyes. So, yeah. In, um, in combination with this attachment. And I think one of the reasons black has not played that as soon as I might be thinking of playing it, is because sometimes Black's going to be doing stuff like this and trying to get uh, a better, a bit more towards the side, for instance, something like this, or better shape at least, with something like this, um, with the idea that maybe Black is going to break through here, in the other case. So sometimes Black will be doing stuff like that, or sometimes stuff like this, um, going down to the second line. So Black has a number of ways to continue after playing the attachment at two. So that could be a reason for him not playing it just yet. There's also the fact that if black has played this exchange, so let, let's say at some point in the past if black has played this exchange, it does make it, when white plays next, it does make it a lot easier for white to play a move like this, which would be um, a good shape move for white. Whereas, without that exchange, um, this would still be a way for white to increase the eye space of white's group while taking away black's eye space. But it does mean that black's going to have different options here. So, like, stuff like this. Um, slightly better options towards the side. Um, because black did not fix the shape, like I was suggesting earlier. So, there's um, there is some reason for black to to have left that. Even though uh, it gives White the opportunity to play from this side, in this game I suppose um, it's probably more important that Black is potentially attacking this White group, and for instance in a variation like this, um, where Black gets to close off from the center and put some pressure on this White group could be more effective. And by the way, I forgot to say, they're, um, they're playing face-to-face -face this time. And so it's the um, first time in probably a few years, ever since the COVID virus came, um, they were playing these international tournaments remotely. But this time it's two Chinese players, so they're playing face-to-face. -face. Um, so yeah, that's something new. And yes, so uh, we're back to the story about Li Xuanhao. Um, yeah. Well, at some point, I, I, my feeling is that we just have to believe that the system is working because we, we just have to hope that it's working well enough. Um, because they have referees watching the players. They have body checks to make sure they're not um, carrying a, uh, some kind of electrical device or um, something like that. Uh, they're supposed to be pretty thorough in um, avoiding allowing players to cheat with uh, with computers or AIs, anything like that. And so I haven't, I wasn't watching. Obviously, I was in Japan while they were playing in China. But um, I, I feel that I have to believe that the organizers were doing a good job of watching them. And all other role players. And, you know, people are talking about how he was 27 years old and, and improved dramatically. Um, I think the fact that um, 
we have AIs to, to uh, do research with, to study with, um, it did give a lot of players a second chance. So players who were maybe strong at fighting, but did not have very good um, opening um, game strategy. Uh, the AIs provided an opportunity to, to fix that. And so they had, um, I think uh, the players, especially players who were still, um, still in their 20s, uh, they're young enough to, to be getting something to, to be able to memorize to a certain degree and to change uh, their, their, to get rid of their weaknesses in positional judgment. <laughs> because uh, to be frank there are some players um who if you just look at the the one uh the weakest part of their game there are some players who um are pretty hopeless and and like they might have some problems with positional judgment or stuff like that and it was to a certain degree, it was very difficult for them to fix that before they had AIs. But with AIs, it was relatively easy for them to um, to to stop playing those slow moves that some people play. So I've seen a number of players change. You might say they changed their styles dramatically uh, because they had access to AIs. And I mean, as far as studying the games, I'm not saying they're cheating with AIs. I'm saying they're studying with AIs. Okay. Yeah. Renee Villarreal is asking, am I rooting for either of the players? Uh, I don't, I don't really care which one wins. It's not me. Right. Playing every day against AI is, uh, is a good way to improve, especially for pros. It's very painful. Nikas is asking how the rest of humanity could catch up with SJS. I think they're catching up already. Uh, like, uh, just to look at this game, it's, it's the final of the LG Cup, and SJS is not there. So, um, I think that people are catching up. He, he's not invincible anymore.
Okay, Risto is asking an end generation for AI role players. Uh, people who forget the human factor of moves and how difficult it is to read and time faster and that stuff. Um, well, you know, they won't forget. But uh, uh, already the younger players are getting really good at handling that in the context of starting with AI ideas and continuing to play the game. They're getting really good at that. So they're, um, so in that way, they're, people are already changing. Um, professional role players especially have changed dramatically because of AIs, because of our study within these things. Okay, so White did go there. So this is the move that um, I was sort of looking at a little bit earlier. Um, so when we compare it with this one, uh, in the game, White is trying to reinforce the White group. So White actually does have an issue with this White group, which is not 100% solid. So if White had played here, this would have usually been the better shape. But we do have the fact that like this kind of stuff. Um, the whole white group here potentially getting cut off. So like this would be cut off too. Um, and stuff like this. So this this whole thing here where the white group is not really safe. And that's probably why white was not playing from the other side. So when white plays here, white's making some eye space for that white group. Yeah. So it's pretty good that Black had not played... It's good for Black that Black had not played that exchange, because in this position it would be lousy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's going to go down to the second line, and then we'll see what Black does. And White does seem to have a rather... Thin situation on the outside. Okay, so that it's very lively chat here. I'm trying to figure out what to answer first. Um, so studying with AI, should it be considered cheating? And I say no, because yes, like like someone else was answering, uh, we used, um, people use Joseki books. We study other professionals' games. Uh, we study, um, we study Tsumigo, we study all sorts of stuff. Um, and we study from other professionals' games. So like, uh, if we're, uh, it's just another tool that we use to study the game, and I think it's that's that should be valid. And so studying with AIs is something that everyone does, and it's I, I can't see any reason for that it would be um, cheating in any way. It's just another way of studying. Um, so yes, so uh, like KZA Park was saying, it depends how you use it. So if you're using it simultaneously with the game to figure out what your next move is going to be, that would be obviously G.
Right, yeah. Everyone has good points there. Like, I like Min Max saying some AI moves are only good if you can read like an AI. And there are situations like that. So when we're researching the openings and stuff with AIs, we have to bear that in mind. So we it, it is an important fact that sometimes it's just very difficult even for a professional goal player to follow through with the moves that an AI suggested. Could that black group die? Well, that's the whole idea here for white. Um, but it's going to be difficult. I, I sort of doubt that. Uh, there's there's the cut in the center, so that's um, that's I-10. And there's the attachment on the left, which is C-11. Uh, C-9, that is. So let's see, yeah. You, can you see the marker here? So the pointer, yeah. So this, this attachment and maybe a cut on the fourth line. This cut here. There's a number of issues that white has to be able to survive before before black actually is going to be killed in the center of the board. I get the feeling here that this is going to be a decisive fight. So if we look at uh, this whole fight developing on the left side, um, if white were gaining territory while attacking the black group and maybe forcing it to live on a small scale and then getting back to the right side, you have to remember there's there's a cohere on the right. So if, if white could um, sort of push black around on the left side, getting some territory and then win the co on the right then i can can i can imagine the game getting very close but here we see all of black's territories are still intact so black has more than 10 points on the bottom side as close to 10 points in the lower left corner so that adds up to about 20 points black already has close to 30 points on the right side um it's going to be over 40 points if black wins the co here so that's a lot of territory black has. White's territory is not increasing. In fact, white's territory on the left side, with the moves that white just played, is it's being decreased. So only about 10 points in the top left corner, maybe 10 point, 20 points on the top side, and then not really anything to speak of. So uh, black has a significant advantage in territory. And so all black has to do is survive the attack here. White's actually pretty serious in almost trying to kill black, or at least to bloody black fairly seriously. So white would like to be able to do that. And locally, it doesn't look like black has room enough for two eyes. So black's going to be using the cut in the center at um, I-10 and the attachment on the left. So I'm, I'm imagining a variation of something like this. And like this. Uh, maybe, maybe, um, probably mix in something like this. And maybe here, maybe here actually. Um, so something like, something like this. I don't know, I don't know about that final move. <clears throat> For instance, something like this where black is actually going to try to kill white in the center. So it could uh, turn into a, a fairly decisive fight, which is, it's going to be a crash for one side or the other.
Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So like that was really interesting. All the comments about AIs. Um, I'm not a computer engineer, so I'm I'm not going to comment on that. I do think that like um. Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's just that AIs, the way they um make the neural networks, is sort of um encompassing what would be probably thousands of years of human experience into that um, thing makes them very effective and so like it is it is like it's an amount of experience that humans can't catch up to but we do understand some of the moves we do have our own understanding and creating our own understanding of the moves is pretty important right yeah so so the, yeah the one that i was interested in is was renee villarreal um, talking about, is there any way white could win without killing? So what I'm saying here is, um, it didn't turn out into that kind of game. So the fact is, white's not getting any extra territory on the left. In fact, white's territory on the left side is decreasing as white tries to kill this black group. So the way it's being played out, it doesn't look like white can win without killing the black group. Unless something like, um... To be frank, you know, things do happen. So maybe something's going to happen. Um, it would take something special for white to be able to win without um, killing the black group or blooding it fairly badly. But it is an example of a position that is really difficult for humans to play correctly. <clears throat> okay, so Black's probably going to cut in the center anyway, um, even though he played the jump first. And there is still an issue with White's connection. So let's let's talk about that one now. Um, okay. So let's try something. I, I'm I'm confident that if I play was playing one of the players, um, I could mess it up still. I could die maybe. Sorry, this way. And there is this move that cuts White off. And at this point, white will not have time to do that because black's connected up anyway. Um, so like, yeah, maybe like this. White does get something back here. Um, but you can see white's group in the center is in trouble. Mm -hmm. And there's some danger on this side too uh, with the wedge here. And this. So there's some danger on this side too. So I, yeah, so basically black wants to get this cut in the center. So for instance, something like this. So that black can make this one work. So it's a combination of the cut at one and the attachment at seven and nine and cutting at nine. If white backs off from this, uh, black's going to end up having enough room to live. So that, that's not going to be good enough for white. So I think that's what the idea is for black here. Okay. Right, TLS is saying there are plenty of AI blinding spots, and that's true. Um, there's a number of cases where the AI doesn't, you might say, doesn't see the move. And so like if it um, in a position like this, it might be giving black a winning per percentage. And then, like, if black makes a mistake and black's winning percentage goes down, that's understandable. But if white were to play a move and black's winning percentage went down, that would just mean that the computer had not calculated that move. And that's something that does sometimes happen.
sometimes it seems that some of the rooms are just them some of the moves are ruled out um and they are not prioritized in the playouts and so they're just sort of ignored and then um when you actually play it then the computer has to change its mind so th that kind of thing does happen so black's playing the cut here first and um next chance he gets he's going to be playing the cut in the center so the clocks on the um the server i'm watching this game on they're still about even in time and so black has 38 minutes white has 41 minutes so they're they're getting close to overtime so this game is probably going to go into overtime before they finish it True, TLS is talking about AIs have differences depending on their objective functions. So yeah, so the way it's set up. So like AlphaGo was, um, when it played itself, um, most of the games were half point differences because it was just winning rather than winning scores. And so it didn't differentiate between winning by a lot and winning by a small margin. And that was a problem actually when computers were playing against each other. And um, so especially even with handicap games, the stronger computer would win just about every time because um, even with a handicap of two stones or three stones, the computer giving taking the handicap would allow it to become close. And then one mistake would lose the game. So yeah, uh, and there are some practical problems with the computers, but um, the fact is we're using them, ideally we should be using them as a study tool, so it doesn't matter. Fuyam Bian is asking, is fine art still the best AI? I think fine art is still one of the strongest, but there's... Um, I forget the names. Like um, I, I tend to forget the names of the eyes that are not so uh, accessible for me. But there's there's a number of very strong AIs, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. There's another Chinese AI which is, I think that's ten cent also. It's really strong too. Okay, Hitas is asking some interesting questions here in, um, in Twitch. Current state of iOS, where's their strength compared to humans? Uh, they do excel at um, reading, playing better go. go uh, yeah, well, the positional judgment is good, and usually the global reading is good. So they're, they, they're better in just about everything. Now. But the, the big, the most important thing is probably the positional judgment. Hmm. Lisa Dahl's ladder game? Which one is that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, w Zhang was comparing fine art and katago and how there's some differences in their opening choices. So like, uh, yes, fine art does not invade the 3-3 as much as katago does. Um, it's a very subtle difference in any case. 
doesn't really matter. I mean, as far as humans are concerned, the difference is very, very subtle. Okay, so this is another way for White to handle the local situation. And um, it's not a ladder. So something like this could happen in Black's two stones in the center. Uh, they're not a ladder. They could be a, a net. So for instance, in this variation, White can capture these stones in a net. This looks a bit dangerous for white, though. Something like this, yeah, it'd be fun. So, that's what white is doing with this, this sequence here. So another uh, thing black could do is, is black could return to the idea of trying to make eyes. So, if black's going to do that, it would be this sequence. And black has one eye there on the left side. It's not two eyes. So if black plays here, that's just a dead shape. But he does have an eye. So if black can make an eye in the center, maybe something like this, then he's going to be alive. So this looks like white's going to fall apart in the center. Question is, can white take away black's eye with center? It looks really, looks look very, very scary for white. So white would, white would like to be able to do that. Something like this. Black still has one eye on the side. And um, center still looks very scary. So he could be thinking of variations along this line. It does require a lot of calculation, I'm sure. Okay, so people were talking about AIs and ladders. Um, it was actually Leela that had a weak point with ladders, and sometimes it misread them. So Leela did have issues with ladders, and I think it still does. Like, I still have Leela on my computer. On the whole, uh, Katago, although on my interface it's still using, I think it's still using the Leela engine, um, it doesn't have... It doesn't have the ladder issue. It's, it seems to be okay with ladders. Okay, the the code Q14. Uh, Rene is asking, from an endgame perspective, could one count the code Q14 as a number of points? And it is slightly complicated um, calculation, but it can be done. And the point is actually... It doesn't matter because obviously, to state the obvious, it, the the player with the more code threats is going to win the call, and so it's in actual play. It's going to be one or the other results, and you don't actually have to. Um, it's sometimes, especially with codes, it can be misleading to attach a number value to the present board position because it's going to be one side or the other is going to win this call. And so there, there's that problem. Uh, but the way you would go about it, for first of all, you would calculate uh, the local position. So you would calculate a comparison. So yeah. So you'd calculate a comparison of, of this, and just ignore Black's moves. So you would calculate this position and how it affects the Black territory and how it affects the White territory. So I guess that would be um, more than 15 points of black territory that has gone away if we compare it to, we just compare it to this so this would be 
about um, just in this block here, it's 14 points. So it's probably a bit more because black territory on the side is going to reduce. So let's just arbitrarily call it 15 points. It's probably a bit more than that. Uh, so 15 points of black territory. And something like, like uh, after this, in the end game, this kind of stuff is going to be forcing. So it's going to be like this. So it's eight points of white's territory. So that would be 23 points. So the difference between white winning and black winning is 23 points, we might say. And so in this position, black is two thirds the way to getting there. So that means that if black plays here, it only costs black one stone. But if white is going to win the code, it's going to cost white two stones. So you have to divide it into, in order for the calculation, for the math in itself, uh, you want, we want to divide it into three equal parts. So uh, black is two steps towards winning the call. Whereas white is, so black has only one step to go. Uh, white has two steps to go to, to winning the call. So black is two thirds of the way. So that would be roughly 15 points um, towards this result. So seven, uh, seven points taken away from this position. So that's how you get the local calculation. And this position is complicated by the fact that after the code is finished, this white group is half dead. So then you would uh, have to half the difference between this and this dead and, and the dead shape where black kills it with this. And you would say that black has gotten half of them. So you would compare that and uh, have a position where either this or this, and then you would have to accept the fact that when white wins the call, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's eventually going to be this shape. So you have to calculate with this. So there's a number of um, calculations. It's, um, so it's a lot of work. And the point is it's, in many cases, it's not even worth it because um, if you know black is going to win the call, it doesn't matter anyway. Okay, so there, black played this and white covered. So in this case, black's not even dead yet. So what I'm saying here is that if black plays here, this is going to be a co. So we'll give this one to white. Or actually black can do it this way too. So we'll give this one to white. And if white plays here, it's going to be a co. So it's, it's, it's already, black has established that black has a potential co. So this one worked. It actually works with this one too. Um, if white covers here, white probably has to cover here just to keep this whole situation on the bottom side intact. And it's going to be a co. So black already has a co. He doesn't want to fight the co yet. So he's, he's going to, he started with the center. Yeah, it's starting to look like a crash for white. Okay, so white's going to be able to push here for a while and then capture with a net on the left. Right, uh, Rick, that is a good question. Um, why did white cover in that case? So that was, it actually surprised me. But, um, you know, there's, if white had played on this side, uh, maybe it was the issue of this move here. In which case, yes. Um, so like this kind of thing. Um, so for instance, if black does it this way, then white's corner could potentially get into trouble here. So I think it's a combination of this move and the center. So black could maybe do it this way also. So this way black would be um, either connecting underneath here and the corner and white's position in the center are both sort of endangered. So I think it must have been the peep that he was worried about. But I, I was, to be frank, I was surprised by this move because it gives black that co on the left.
Uh, it's starting to look like it's should be relatively easy for black here because uh black's connected up there with the uh this is the game position so black will play once here and um it's probably gonna do this black can cut white off here okay so for the time being black is alive in the center uh, black might not want to be too well, actually if black can get this one in earlier so this this situation Oh uh, yeah, but white does have, let's see, so it's like this. Black has an eye here. Uh, black has an, yeah, so locally this is not alive yet. So there is the, the fact that this black group on the top is, uh, for the time being, it's not 100%. So after white escapes, uh, black will have to worry about that. But white has weaknesses also. So there's that. Um, 11 is already cut white off, so like we could say white's going to play this at some point, or white's going to play this at some point. This is probably a bit more profitable. Um, even after this, there's this stuff that happens. Uh, this is forcing, threatening the wedge, and white's going to fall apart on this side. So it does look like white's going to have trouble here. Let's, let's see what the game is doing. Okay, black played this one first. So you can see black is heading towards that variation. Yeah, so just locally, um, like, white well, could play a ko, but it's a ko, after all. So this one, and with the squeeze here. Uh, so this is threatening the wedge here at I5, 15. So there's that, and the fact that um, otherwise black can... So already when black connects at 10, uh, one or the other side is going to be cut off. So in combination with that and the attachment here, which cuts white off in the center and threatens white's group in the center. So yeah, black could even just ignore that. Um, this looks really, this looks like trouble. Looks like a collapse for white. Well, white has to kill black. Yang has the white stones. He has to try very hard to kill black because he doesn't have enough territory. Right. Yeah, I think that if black lives on... It's not just living on the left side. It looks like white's position is in danger of just falling apart at this point. Okay. Yeah, I think that the whole, the first, um, I'd go back, let's just um, recap just a little bit. It's not over yet, obviously. But um, Rick was asking, the whole game seemed like Black dominated it. And where did White go astray? I think I'm going back to my comment at this point in the game, where White invaded here, and played this move, and then sort of dodged into the corner. So like, this seemed to be inconsistent to me. And I think it made more more sense, for instance, for white to sacrifice on a small scale. So I was suggesting a variation like this, where white can still uh, play some forcing moves against the corner. So that would be an example of um, if white were going to save everything uh, with some variation like this, um, this is a, ver a shape that I've seen before. So white could be escaping out towards the center. If white plays the exchange of one for two, then white cannot sacrifice this group. If white has not played anything, like as in this position, sometimes white can afford to uh, to sacrifice everything because white still has so moves like this or like this, which which can potentially get some forcing moves from the corner and towards the left side. 
So the fact that White sort of committed to saving these two stones by adding a stone to them makes them heavy, um, and then dodged into the corner, it seemed inconsistent. So like this would be more consistent. And so this is what I'd been expected. Um, so in this variation, Buck does end up killing the, those two white stones. And white is trying very hard to make something happen with them. So maybe that was where white went wrong. I, I think that would be my guess. And so like it's a very precarious situation here where everything depends on a co. And black doesn't really have very much liability because the cutting stones are cut off, they're captured. And black does have a lot of territory already. So black has 20 points in this block here and some points towards the center, more than 10 points on the bottom here and close to 10 points in the corner. So that's 40, 50, something like 50 points already. And white has areas, but doesn't really have a lot of territory yet. So already it's looking like it's a difficult game for white with not so much territory, established territory that is, and some liability in the lower right corner already. So I think it goes back to the way white handled this initial fight uh, where he invested an extra stone um, by covering here. And then he didn't, he didn't try to save it. So this, this became what we call in Japan, we call it mochikomi or playing inside your opponent's territory. So the whole sacri uh, the whole idea here, I think there was something wrong with it. So to get back to the board position, the present board position. Okay, so yeah. So, um, so like I was saying, at this point, white has a choice of playing a co which would be immediately a call, be a call for the life or death of White's group, basically. Or if White connects here, it already looks like I, I can't see a way out of this for White. Because this cuts White off. Uh, White cannot connect, so if, uh, so this would, this just cuts White off. Um, and it's too late to play that. Even if white could, it would be a bit painful. So this would, this would allow white to do this, and it would still be a co. So it's it's not it's it's still painful. But uh, white doesn't have time to play it. White never really had time to play it. So like at some other point, white could play here and save the cutting stones. But at the very least, black can well, black can connect too. But um, black could play it this way if he wanted to. So it's it's not going to be serious, and white doesn't have time to do that anymore. So, yeah, so like this, like this, black can cut white off. Um, there's no way white's going to win this race to capture. Like white has something like uh, seven or eight liberties. And black probably has well over 10, more like 15. Black has a lot of liberties. Or if black, if white escapes in this direction. Black could continue here for a bit. Black has a forcing move here. So everything is connected, like there's no cutting move here. It's just not working. So black could continue like this, or black could just leave that and forget those black stones, because he doesn't really need them if he can capture this white group. So this would be threatening the wedge here, or threatening to push through here. It looks like, I, I don't see... Maybe at some point white can play a pick here. Like, it, it doesn't look like it's going to end well for white, uh, whatever he does. So it does look a bit desperate. This might be... Uh, kicking once at 13 might might change things a little bit. It might make it a little... Um, it, I, still, with that potential co on the left, and the fact that white doesn't have any eyes, it still looks bad for him. Okay, so that's that's where they are now, and white is probably deciding whether to connect or play the co. So like if the if they play the co, locally it's a co, um, but 
like white already has three cutting points so like the important ones are this cutting point on the left and this cu cutting point on the right already th those are cutting points that are pretty destructive so yes so that that's it's going to be a tough go for white to fight Uh, Renee is asking if I ever played either of these players. No, no, I was, um, there was a time when I was playing a lot of games in international tournaments, and um, that was before these players came. Right, TLS is saying, uh, I agree. Uh, I don't think uh, he's going to resign yet. But I don't, don't see what he's going to do about it. You know, like, it, it looks... It just looks very difficult. Ah, uh, yes, no. Hmm. Yes, and the co the co fight like it's black basically has another pro on the left side, so that would probably be good enough. And co threats in the center of the board all over the place. So co's are are in this game. I think the co is a bad idea for white. Hmm. Okay, Q sixteen, yeah. Okay, white connected. So yeah, how black is going to finish this? Okay, black plays the peep. Yeah, so I think it's going to be the variation that I was showing where black cuts white off in the center. Yeah, squeezes first. So this squeeze is good because it establishes that wedge that I was showing later. So the wedge after black connects at H17. H and black's going to continue by cutting white off in the center. Because that's important. It creates a lot of weak white groups. Yeah. So yeah, the only way for white to keep this exciting is probably to kick at f13. So that's the move that looked the most, um, seemed to have the most potential for me. So if it ever develops into a race to capture, a semi, uh, white's going to win. So uh, that's the one winning, that's a winning scenario for white, the, the semi uh, white has some extra liberties, so like um, along here, white has four, four, about four liberties. White probably will have some liberties along here left, um, and and white has some height in general. So if we compare it to this black group, white probably has more liberties. So in most cases, I would expect white to have an advantage if if it gets in into a race to capture. Yes, capturing Black's group on the top side and sacrificing the whole white group on the bottom side is not an option. 
So that would work like maybe if white was just sacrificing a slice of the white group. But the problem is that it lacks group in, on top. It's pretty much alive already. Okay, so black's playing the cut. Ah, yeah. So like this is this is easy stuff that I've already talked about. All right. White's group in the center there looks it already looks like it's in danger actually. But white could fall apart on that part of the board. Yes. Okay. So yes, um, on the top half of the board, black still has a way to attack. And that could be bad for white. But it looks easier to attack on the bottom side. Okay, yeah, so he, he went that way. So this is the other move that I was thinking about. I don't see how White's going to deal with this one either. Leonardo, good night. Uh, just remember, um, if Yan Dingxing manages to win this game, I I will be coming back tomorrow. So yeah, in, there's going to be a third game tomorrow if Yan Dingxing can win. Uh, looks maybe like that's not going to happen. But yeah, otherwise... If he does win, I, I'm coming back tomorrow. Otherwise, there's going to be the Nanjing Cup at the end of this month. So uh, I'll be doing that maybe. Probably. Okay, David Peter is asking, is the black group on the top in danger? Um, for the time being, it's alive. When black plays this move, um, there are some cases where it's going to die. But... Um, the fights on the rest of the board are more important. So it's Black's group on the left, which is not alive yet. And White's group in the center, which is not alive yet. And White's group on the bottom side, the lower left, which is in danger also. Yeah, so to go back to the left side, um, so I understand now that if white can kick here, it's going to be difficult for black to cut it off outright. So if white, if black answers here um, and pushes through, white can play here. And if black cuts, uh, white can capture this stone. So it actually is, is not quite working for black. Um, but if we look at the entire position here, this white group is not alive. So if we say something like this happens, uh, you can see it's... it's it's pretty dead. Like, maybe white has one eye and a full side here. So this is one of the cases where sometimes it would become a race to capture. Uh, yeah, white at some point has to play this exchange too. So in some cases it would become a race to capture. So that would be potentially exciting. But there's still this ko on the left side. So if black plays here at any point, it's going to be a ko. So uh, if black times this co well, it's going to be, I'm pretty sure it's going to be bad for white anyway. So at some point, black's going to be playing this co. Okay, so the question is, how, how persistent is black going to be on the top side? So white is just saving this group. Locally, uh, white's position here is sort of falling apart. Um, but the only stones that are important are this these stones that white has in the, in the center so as soon as white gets connected up here uh white will be ready to to do something on this side um to attack the black group so black has to be careful about how far he goes with that fight on the top so if we're looking at um if we're looking at the black group it's it's sort of irrelevant at this point but if we assume something fairly balanced happens in the lower left part of the board um, then um, if we look at this group, let's see, how do we look at this? So at some point, white can play here. It's really difficult for, for white to take away black size. Or white can play here. Um, it still depends sort of on for, um, potential forcing moves in the center of the board. So like if black plays here, 
in here. Uh, like, you know, theoretically, maybe white can kill this, but in the actual play, it's going to be really difficult. So, um, black has various ways to, um, yeah, white also has to play this one. Uh, the black has various ways to counterattack, and it's just not going to work. So, like, this, this would be a crash for white. So, yeah, it's just, it's not, not working. Um, so, usually it's going to be difficult for white to kill these stones. And in any case, if black starts doing stuff like this, it's not all that relevant. So, like, white could capture the whole group there. If this entire group on in the lower left, if the white group dies, then whether or not white captures black's group in the top, it's not relevant. Okay, uh, Hita says that his AI thinks that Black lost almost four points in the squeeze before the cut. And that could be because Black shouldn't have squeezed, but should have just connected. So, um, let's see, where am I? Yeah, so here, I was I was thinking about that a little bit. Even if Black plays like this and like this, Black can accomplish the same thing. So maybe Black should have just left that and played here immediately. Um, with, for instance, if White does this, Black can always do that squeeze at some other time so black can play this exchange and have a liberty open so that's uh, one point in territory that black threw in a stone so this one point difference and in some cases the liberty could be important so that is potentially a mistake that black made um yeah but you you might have noticed that i i sort of wanted to squeeze that also so like it's that was the shape move but it might have been better for black to leave that liberty open or at least potentially open Okay, so here we are. Um, Black has played the honey there. Okay. Yeah, Black is playing all over the place, isn't he? So it, it maybe Black's not exactly certain how this is going to turn out. Or it could be that he's trying to reinforce that Black group on the top a little bit more. So it looks like Black cannot kill White in the center. So for instance, if Black, um, the cut doesn't work. So that would be this move and this move. It doesn't work because black runs out of liberties. And the same with the other cut. So yeah, so it's like this. Um, looks like black can uh, maybe even play this one with center. Yeah. So yeah, so black can reinforce the group on the top a bit before returning to the center. But the left side... Um, if black plays a move here, so if black plays here, this is going to be a call. So it's going to be this call. So that's a call that black can play. Otherwise, uh, so like I was talking about this, and with the kick here, white is actually connected. So that, that's something that I was missing at first, actually, to be frank. White can connect like this. So that's not working, um, but... Yeah, and white probably has to play this one too. Uh, however, it means that uh, black can play moves like this, and white is very weak as far as eye space is concerned. So, like, sometimes... See, white still has four liberties here. And this could sometimes turn into a seki, even. So that's a possibility. Or it could turn into a call. If black plays this one, and this one is going to be a call. So a combination of those various things, probably using moves like 5 and 11 as co threats, I think black can uh, still has, uh, can have success here. So it looks really difficult for white. <clears throat>
Yeah, so you see he's just reinforcing that group on the top. This is another forcing move. It's threatening to play the Hane here. So let's let's make a diagram for that. So if white plays away, um, if white plays away, black can play here and, and capture these stones. So that that's that would be easy. So white has to answer somehow. Maybe white's going to play something like this. So black's group on the top is pretty much alive now. It's actually um, not that easy for white. Would white could play like at some point white could play this move, and it looks like white's going to connect up. But um, Later on, after black connects here, this is sort of borderline because it's not always forcing. So in this case, um, black cannot cut here, but can cut off the corner. Like um, if white can capture black's group on the left, sometimes this is going to work for white. So it's it, in that way, it is sort of borderline. Although I'm not sure, I'm not sure about this white group on the whole. So it's, it's sort of dangerous for white still. So like this variation, yeah, maybe white's okay. There's this kind of a eye-like shape here. Yeah, it looks like white has a potential eye there in the center. Yeah, that looks like it's a potential eye. This way works also. Yeah. So. So yeah, it's not it's not going to be forcing indefinitely, maybe. Oh, but when white plays there, maybe it is forcing in this variation. So in this variation, um, okay, so it would be like this, like this. And when black has a forcing move here, forcing move here. Uh, let's connect it to the black group. So yeah, when black does this, the white group will be dead. Maybe another race to capture. White has about 12 liberties. Yeah, so white's going to win the race to capture. Black doesn't want to go. Black doesn't want to go down this road yet. So black does not have any more forcing moves against white on the top side. But at some point, black does have a very annoying move here. So yeah. So um, so here. And if white answers that, black can push through and cut here. So this is this is the real annoyance. That th this would be devastating, obviously. And so at any point, white would have to answer something on this side. So that, that's very annoying. The fact that black can push through it too. So that's probably what black. One of the things black is looking at. For the time being, white's about to be cut off here. So it's, it's going to be like this is the connected shape for white. Uh, this is the connected shape for white. It's eyeless. So like, um, there's still the issue of when does black play the ko on the left. So black has a number of ways to play the ko. It might actually be better to play this one. Uh, to put more pressure on the white group. So there's a ko here. F10, yeah, black doesn't really... F10 is probably not the most efficient way to, to make eyes. Um, like, there's there's a number of ways black can play this, and a number of ways black can have success in this, in this fight. I think it looks very difficult for white. So, um, playing the ko on the left side here at some point is... Probably the e the way that I would find most easy. Okay, white did not play. Oh, oh. So what was that? So white played an attachment here. Okay. Oh yeah. It's because black filled the liberties here. So, um. So that's okay. I just understood something. So uh, that goes back to the mistake, the so-called mistake that Black made here with the squeeze. So let's just take another look at this. Uh, and uh, someone was telling me that his AI, okay, yeah, it was hit, hit, hit us. 
Hit Hit Hitos from uh, Twitch, who was telling me that the, his AI told him that Black lost four points in the squeeze. So this is an example of a position where it became real. Uh, so if Black had simply played here, let's do this variation, and here, and at any time Black can force with this move or the squeeze, means that White's going to end up playing the same sequence. So this sequence here. And Black's probably going to at some point play this exchange. So Black has an extra liberty here. Um, so the important point is that Black has a, an open liberty at J12 at this point here. So to go back to the game, in this variation that White did, so the way White chose to play it, Black did not have the wedge here because of a shortage of liberty. So that, that's how it became real. So in this variation, um, White would be able to push through here. And the fact that Black has filled this liberty at um, it's J, J12, it, it decisively makes a difference. So that's uh, probably why your AI didn't like it with this, if you're still there. Okay, so, uh, but anyway, um, okay, so black already has the option of living. And white doesn't have two eyes. Okay, so, so black probably, so let's see, how is black going to do this? All right, so now the forcing move at um, where is it? J F F10. The forcing move at F10 looks like it's probably going to be relevant. Yeah, yeah, so I'm catching up with you. So, what I'm talking about here is, uh, so Black can play the forcing move at F10. Right? And Black can uh, play one of these moves. At some point, White can play an Atari here, maybe. So, we'll give that to White. And white has to play here to kill black. And black has an eye in the center. So this, this eye is, is just there. So black's alive. Black's alive in the center. And actually white is not alive. So white's in trouble here. Yeah, but black probably shouldn't try to kill it. So, so like if black tried to kill it, it would mean black would be playing like this. And this is forcing. And black's going to be doing stuff like this. So this is probably going to end up with a bad result for black. Because the corner's going to die. So that didn't work out. Um, but black actually doesn't have to go that far. So in this variation. So yeah, black has this forcing move. And this move. White can... this this The left side, black has one eye there. So to simplify it, we could look at it like this. Black has one eye there. And black has an eye in the center. So black's alive. So um, black can just play here and allow white to live. Whatever white does, white's alive. And then black can get back to this, capturing the three white stones. Uh, on the right side, it's like this. Black has all these forcing moves. White's falling apart. And black still has most of the right side. Um, so white's not gaining anything. White's not going to have time to play the co on the right side. Looks like it's a, a win for black. Okay, so it's black's turn here. And he's probably thinking about how to finish the game. It still looks like it's going to be a win for black. Right, exactly.
Yes, so I think basically it's just a question of whether black's going to go uh, the way I was showing, where black is just going to, to survive. This is the easy way to do it. Like, this is, it's, it's, anyone can see that this black group is alive. So, like, even if we give this to white, black has an eye on the left side and can make a second eye in the center. So that's easy. Maybe this is better. Yeah, this is this is this is better. Okay, but it's the same eye. Um, this is this is just more secure. And white's gonna live, and black's gonna get back to this to this point. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is the easy way. Okay. He's, he's doing it the tough way. I wasn't, I'm not really surprised. Okay. So in this variation, Black's, looks like Black's going to try to kill White. So White has a potential eye on the left side. So that's here. So a potential eye here. White has a potential eye here. So that adds up to one eye. And sort of a potential eye here. So if black plays any move, white's going to be only having one eye. So if black plays away, black can still play away. Black can still do it the safe way. So let's say black plays away and does something like... Yeah, let's let's have black do it. Um, let's do the F10 move anyway. Since, um, people have been suggesting it. Uh, so it's, yeah, let's do it this way. It's it's relevant, you see, uh, when white gets this point and it's taking away the wedge at at e9, e11, that is. So wherever black plays the next move, um, it's getting rid of this move for white. So it's just a, a kind of a safe way to do it. Uh, so we'll start with that. It doesn't really matter. The order of moves doesn't matter. The left side here is going to be an eye, whatever white does. So like white can do that. White can do this. It doesn't change the fact that it's an eye. It's an eye. So black's alive. And black's... Now, if white plays first here, for instance, like this, it's really difficult for black to try to kill the white group. Because first of all, white gets to take away the corner from black, and then white gets to play here. So this would actually be alive. And black would be in trouble. Because white can actually... You know, well, it's, it's alive anyway. Uh, just disregard what it well, is that? <laughs> okay um, so that's not working so black can live and allow white to live so that, that would that's what this would amount to so black can do that or black can try to kill white at this point which would potentially lead to a race to capture which I think is dangerous for black Black probably still has a number of options, though. Time, yes. The time is... Uh, it says it's 10 minutes for black and about 16 minutes for white, according to the server here. And it sort of agrees with the total thing. So, like, uh, they've been playing by... They've been playing more than five and a half hours now. Um, so that must be the, the age of my stream also i guess i've been playing about five and a half hours and they had uh three hours apiece so they're both they they should add, add up to close to 30 minutes so it makes sense that black has 10 minutes and white has 16 so that's about right
It is strange that White has more time to... But, yeah. But, um... Despite the fact that he's behind, uh, sometimes it's easier to play a losing game. Because sometimes you just play quickly. Arguably, yes. So Rene is asking, shouldn't he have been spending spending the time uh, thinking about how to get out of trouble? And uh, yeah, his, his opponent would have been using that time also. So maybe he's trying to keep it um, as speedy as possible. Okay. It looks like Black is going to do it the easy way. Like, Black surely has a number of um, options here. Mm -hmm. But trying to kill the white group is sort of scary. So black just have to make has to make sure he's alive in the corner. That's important. Pretty important. So black probably has a number of ways to live on the side. Yeah, but that's the way to do it without a co. Right. So that's that's alive. Okay. So looking at the lower side there is the question of, of can white play away so if we look at it like this so black's alive in the center um white actually has a forcing move here so if black plays away from that white can play like this and the the liberty filled there made a made a difference so yeah so white has one eye there uh, but actually is probably going to die anyway when black does this. So it's like this. And white's just... Yeah. And I don't see how white can kill black in the corner. So like if white tries something like this... In fact, white already has an eye on the left. So it's sort of irrelevant. So it looks like black is just perfectly alive. And white is just dead. That means that black is going to get... To the top side so it means that uh, white ends up playing something like this um, black gets to play this move this is really painful because um just because it, it has all this stuff attached to it so this this kind of stuff 
and the fact that this is turning into a black territory. So that's why it's really important for black to get to eight. And that core on the right side, it's, it's not relevant to the outcome of the game anymore. Yeah, so that's, that's how I see it. Okay. Well, I did take the co. That was forcing. Okay, so white needs one more move on the bottom, and if black connects on the top, that's pretty much the end of the game. So, yeah. I think we might be nearing the end. White made a mistake early in the game. I'd say white's mistake was on the right side in the first fight that they had. Okay, white's going to die on the bottom side here. So that's 20, 40, 50, 60, about 80 points. It's bigger than black's top side. Yeah, that's only about 60 points. Mika Pringle asking uh, losing move phrase. Uh, is it always one move? Um, or is it a sum of smaller, subtler errors? So that's, um, it depends. Um, so like sometimes your opponent plays a bad move that um, it sort of resets the game and you have to play another losing move before you lose. So that, that kind of thing can happen. Um, in a messy game, they say that the, the player who, the, the last person to play a losing move is the loser. Uh, so that, that kind of game can happen also. Okay, so white's sort of just asking black to, to kill white. And the way black goes about it, um, black could go wrong. So, like, for instance, if black plays 
if black were to allow white to cut on the third line. So, for instance, oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. So, this is relatively dangerous. In this case, black's group in the center is not always... Oh. Okay. Um... I was not expecting this move. Okay, let's make a diagram. Okay, in this case, uh, let's just start with showing what I thought black was going to do. Okay, if black plays here, uh, white uh, has two areas where white can potentially make an eye. So there's this area, which is not an eye yet. So like locally, black can just play, uh, sorry, like this and take away that eye. So black can wedge here to take away that eye. Uh, white has an eye on the left, um, but it's not going to be good enough. So the question is, can white take away black's two eyes? Uh, however white tries, white's not going to be able to do that. So like if white... Um, so in this case, black would just be alive as it stands. It's already alive. And so otherwise, like... Uh, it's a lie. So there's no way for white to kill this black root. So yeah, so like, uh, try harder. Doesn't, it's still not going to work. So it's, it's still not going to work. So if, if black plays this way and allows white to make a life, an eye on the left, it's no, de no big deal. However, yeah, he's not even trying to kill it. So that's, that's weird. Um, so in this variation, uh, black uh, lived on the top side, so okay, but um, the problem is black would like to be able to kill white here. Uh, let's, let's make a diagram. Okay, black would like to be able to kill white here. And the problem is that, um, well, not in the corner. In the corner, black is perfectly alive. So even though white has a forcing move here, and there's, there's enough room for black to be alive in the corner. The problem is on the other side, because however black does it, the liberty here is going to be filled up. And white can play here. Uh, black has one eye on the left and has to make a nine in the center. Up to this point, before Black had filled that liberty at one, and however Black plays to take away the eye on the left, it's going to fill that liberty. So, like, even if Black had, if Black had crawled here, actually, uh, there's this way for White to make an eye. So that that would not work. So that's why Black was playing from this side. And the problem is that when White plays here, and White plays here, White plays here. Uh, Black's, because of that filled liberty, Black's losing his eye. So this would be a collapse for Black. So Black had to avoid that by playing this move. And the whole white group would, looks like it's dead to me. So I'm having trouble understanding what, what he was thinking. Because he can't kill it now. So maybe they're going to play an end game. Okay. So, so Black protected the center group in the center. And with this move, white has finally gotten rid of the threat of black playing here. So uh, so now the fact that white has captured these three stones, it makes this variation okay for white. So white doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Black still does have the forcing move here, which to a certain degree, it protects black's territory. So yeah, I guess that's a good thing. Um, Not nearly as successful for black as I had expected. Like black gave away most of his advantage. Right. And so people are catching on to it here. Obviously, just um, it was obvious to me that he made a mistake. So it was really weird that he. White, White was sort of just asking to be killed. 
uh, because he didn't have any good options. So that I can understand White playing away and just he was probably prepared to um, to resign if if it didn't go well for him. Like it's it's understandable if you're losing anyway. Uh, but Black playing here, I mean, he could have killed it with this stone. And that's hard for me to understand, uh, that the fact that he would... Uh, yeah, I thought my day was over. <laughs> okay, so it's it's going to be an end game now. And yes, Black did not play that forcing move, so now White gets to jump in. It, it could be that this is turning to an exciting end game. It does look like Black is still winning. Ah, black b9, it didn't make any difference. So, yes, uh, that was Morph Go asking about black b9 in that variation. Let's take another look at that variation then, just in case I'm missing something. Uh, so, black plays here. Oh no, it was the variation where black tries to kill after the game move. So, yeah, and black plays here and here, and like this. And black b9 is this move. So wherever black plays, it's not an eye anymore. So if black plays here, white throws in anyway. There's no way for black to make an eye. Black can make a ko out of it. But uh, this this ko is probably pretty bad for black. Like it's... Um, it doesn't look good. So b9, um, not directly always necessary. But there's no better move locally anyway. So it's not working. This is not working for black. Yeah, that I was almost speechless for a moment there. It was dead, and he allowed it to lot live. So that that's where people are saying that the the score given by um, the computer chain it it um, slided about thirty points in favor of white. That's because the whole group was dead, um, and he allowed it to live. So yeah, so we're going to see an end game here. Okay, so black still does have that forcing move. So I'm talking about so if white takes the call, black does have this forcing move, which is threatening to push through here. And this would be a collapse for white. So black still does have that forcing move, which will allow black later on to capture this white stone. So it's not as if that white stone is connected up yet. Right, I was looking at that, but not, no. So, yeah. So, that was uh, MX Hero of Gold. Uh, let's take another look at that variation again. So, it was this one. So, the real question is the life or death of the black corner. And it just, so we're going to give this one to white uh, for the reasons that I was showing how it, how it has to do with the life or death of the black group. So, it's, it's this variation again. 
where white can kill it like this. So black wants to avoid that one. So we'll give that to white. And uh, so white has to find a way to kill the corner. So like uh, white would like to be able to squeeze from this side, but it's just not working. So the best white can hope for is this. And like if black captures, uh, this is still bad. So this is still not working. Um, so let's, let's start from this side. If white plays here, this is just locally alive. Like it's whatever white does, there's no way this is going to be less than the bent for a living shape. And so actually this is a better way for white to try to take black's eyes, but it's not going to be good enough. So the other option is throwing in here at some point. It doesn't really matter how black answers that. But so for instance, like this. Uh, I mean, like, no, in this case, black would play more, sorry. And it's, it's still a living shape. So, like, there's no way for white to kill the black group. So that's what I was um, thinking about, but there's just no way. Oh, PhD Tony, thank you. Thank you for the donation. Yeah, so they're playing the co. Yeah, so this code is pretty important. Yes, so yeah, yeah, um. W. Zhang is suggesting maybe you wanted to show off his endgame calculation skills. You know, that's the thing. Like, um, there's the idea that sometimes you want to avoid a complicated variation if you're not 100% sure of it and just go into an endgame. So that that is something that people do, and it makes sense. Only this one, like the local calculation, um, like it, I, I saw it immediately. I I don't see any mistake I've made. It should be easy enough. Like th this this local calculation, the fact that the white group was dead, it didn't take that much. So, um, being human, we make mistakes, and just a prolonged end game will give black that many more chances to make mistakes. So it's actually very. If it's it's probably pretty big. Uh, difference a few points apparently but um so that so that's probably safe enough for black but still it, it does give black more opportunities to, to mess up just because of the number of moves that are played Actually, Risto is asking, which is harder, getting back to the game mentally to play an end game when you thought you were already lost? Or having to play an end game on a game you thought you won already? Uh, playing an end game, well, yeah. So it really depends on how Black felt about allowing this white group to live. Um, so like if it was just a mistake and, or some, some, something he over, some kind of oversight, then there is some shock, and so it's a bit, sometimes it can be challenging mentally. So, like, um, when you've lost, when you thought you lost the game and it turns into end game, you're probably just happy that you, you can continue uh, <laughs> trying to win. And, yeah, so that's, that's a position where I'd be feeling relatively happy.
Yeah, all I can say is I was very surprised. Okay, so it looks like Black has some cool threats. Uh, they're both uh, trying to avoid playing cool threats in the top right because uh, they both have various options. So, for instance, um, for instance, if White at some point were to play a move here, locally it would be forcing, but it would allow Black to do stuff like this, maybe. So that would be a problem. And playing something like this, it probably is not forcing. So, like, let's see what what happens with this. Looks like black can escape here. Um, or black might play here and just use the extra co threats. Because black does get a lot of co threats. Um, so, like this. And, and then later on, it's going to be these co threats. Black does get a lot of co threats here. So, both sides are sort of hesitant to fix the shape there in the upper right. Black's, Black's probably going to win the call. I think Black's going to win the call here. Um, Black doesn't want to give anything up. White's, White's starting to run out of call threats. Maybe two call threats in the lower left corner. And a couple of... And White doesn't really want to play many more of the call threats on the left side. So maybe one more there. Black has a quote threat against the big white group in the lower left. And then I guess it's the upper right. So it looks like black does have a slight advantage in quote threats. <laughs> yes. Uh, if they're fighting for a world champion, I don't think they want to show off playing bad moves. No. I, I sort of I have to disagree with that. Okay, so this is actually, it's not just a threat to the top side, but white has to be careful about the corner too. So if black plays, if white plays on this side, then this threat comes back. So white has to defend in a way that avoids this. So I guess white's going to play on the other side. Yes, after white loses the co, white has to play at R19, depending on what the co threat was. So, like, there are some exceptions. So, for instance, if white plays a co threat here, uh, white's going to continue on this side. And it could lead to a kind of a trade here. So, this, this would actually be pretty big. So, white would profit from this. And black would end up playing here, maybe, and white would play here. So there are some cases where white can sort of slip in and exchange there. Okay, white played. Okay, I almost missed that one. So white has one more cool threat against the black group. And after that, white still has a few co threats, but they they get to be difficult to play. Okay, black played that one. Hmm.
Okay. So another example would be, for instance, I'm, I'm sort of expecting that this is going to be forcing. So if black ignores that and kills the corner, then this group is going to die. So that would be bigger. So white's probably going to answer this one. So that's a cool threat. Um, white has a cool threat here. That's probably, uh, yeah, this would be a cool threat. Um, maybe here. And I think this one is going to be forcing, I'm not sure about this one, so, um, Yeah, so so this might be the question. Otherwise, white could play co-threats like this, which do lose a little bit. So this would lose a little bit. Um, this would be maybe less damaging, but it's a move that white would rather not be playing. So it, it's going to be some one of these. And eventually, black has this one. Yeah, so some, some kind of a trade somewhere around that. For instance... Uh, uh, by the way, this one is probably not going to be forcing. So in this case, black would be able to sacrifice these stones and capture the corner. So yeah, so this would probably be okay for black. K7 doesn't work. That's why he's not playing it. Okay, so that's that's worth making a diagram actually, because it's something that people can uh, misunderstand, can make a mistake on. So black plays the cut here. Looks like it might work, but actually it doesn't. So it wasn't working. So depending on how black does play the center there, uh, black might have a few cool threats. Okay, yeah, I see. That's a forcing move.
Okay, so that is not forcing. Yeah, so the black group is alive, and he's going to connect the co. Oh, it is forcing. Sorry. Uh, so it's black cannot connect the co. That was dangerous. I, I could have thrown the game. Yeah. Okay, so black needed that. Okay, so that was white's last cold threat there. Because, and they both, looks like they're both in overtime now. So white has to answer that one because black can cut. Now black can cut at um. At well, black can directly cut at k7 or play the kick boost. Okay, uh, some interesting questions. So PHC Tony is asking how physically demanding are these commenters? I guess they are. They're pretty demanding. Um, but I enjoy them too. So that's that's okay. Um, and Risto is asking how do you play over the board on Chinese rules and pro games? And that reminds me of a time I, when I was playing uh, Gu Li um, in one of the international tournaments. And... Um, he was going to throw the stone back. So like in casual games in China, that's what they do. They actually throw the stone back into your ball. Sort of toss it in. Um, but uh, really sort of mid-track, he realized that uh, I would probably be shocked. And so he sort of, um, he had trouble deciding where to put it. And so he put it on the side. Um, sort of, there was this little... Um, cape, uh, there was um, an area on the side where he, he put it where, next to his T or something. I forget exactly where it was. Okay, so Black is starting to run out of cold threats. Uh, maybe he's going to lose the co actually. <clears throat> Okay, maybe it's time for white to play a cold thread on the left side. Hmm. Yeah. So this move in itself is not losing any points. But the next cold threat will be a bit painful.
Okay, so let's see. Black is running out of cold threats. Black does have... Looks like Black has a cold threat against the top left corner. So that would be... Maybe... Uh, this would lose a point, though. But maybe he's going to play this one. Uh, that would lose a point. Uh, maybe he's going to play that one. I guess it's not that bad. It loses a fraction of a point. Um, okay. Lai Laryl is asking, um, is losing a point bad enough? Okay, so now this is mo losing a couple, a few points. It's going to lose, I'd say it seems to be losing two points. So yes, so let's see. So that's the que what the question was. Um, is it a big deal? So sometimes it is. Um, and I think that cold threat on the top was big enough. So let's take a look at it. So if black peeps here and white finishes the co, black can not, and white cannot connect here. So if white connects, um, the whole thing is going to die. So that the whole white group here is going to die. Oh, maybe not. Oh yeah, maybe yes. It's going to die. So that's bad. And it means white has to sacrifice the two stones. So that's a bit painful. I think that's big enough for black. And then black would uh, still have sente. Oh, maybe not. Oh, black doesn't have sente. So black would not play that, but would instead play something like this. So this is probably good enough for black anyway. Okay, so black has another cold threat in the center. Or if he's really desperate. Um, let's see, so let's let's give this one to white. This is sort of borderline, whether this is going to be forcing or not. But uh, now black can afford to answer it, because black can throw in here. And let's see, let's give it Okay. Like this. Uh, am I in trouble here? So white can throw in here. Then finally, black could probably play something like this. And that would be a forcing cut one. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like black is going to win the co after all. And it's probably pretty important. So, yeah, so white connected here. Uh, obviously, if black answers that, white's going to have enough cultures. So maybe it's about time for black to play away. Yeah, so black finishes the call. And white has to live in the lower right corner. That's about 26 points. 26 points. A little bit more, maybe. It's 26 points. Hmm. So... Twenty-five points. Yeah, but so white played here. So capturing the lower right corner is about twenty-five points, and capturing black on the right side, how big is that? So if black plays here, that's dead, and this is dead. So that's 22 points of territory for white. So that's this territory. Yeah, it's 22 points. 
and black had something like four points up this so it's um in this case that's about eight points so it's about 30 points so this is this move is about 30 points this move is about 25 points so this is it's bigger for black to play here maybe he's going to play here and since there's almost nowhere to play maybe he's going to do it this way not to forget this 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 exchange Okay, back to the game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they're wrapping up finally. So, yeah. <sighs> Looks like Black is going to win after all. Hmm. Yes. So it's usually the knight's move that black plays. Right here. Oh, sorry. The knight's move here. So like this, and eventually like this. And then eventually like this, and like this. And black's going to be putting some stones inside the black turtle. So this is relatively small. Although it, white has to stop it. White has to play here anyway. So... Uh, that's how it's going to eventually turn out. Usually black would play here and then find some other big point. Uh, maybe here or something. Uh, however, he chooses this move in the game. That's because white has to play at R19 anyway. And black is going to get to play this move. So either here, this is pretty big too. But uh, maybe this is the more normal way to do it. Either way, uh, it's a much better territory to black plays here. So white's going to follow with this. And then black can start playing all these endgame moves. Um, it, it's reverting into a normal end game, so like like this. Um, maybe this is bigger. Maybe Black wants to start with that move. Yeah, he doesn't have to hurry with that, so he can play here. So yeah, it looks like Black's gonna win. After all, and I think he almost threw it, but um, I guess he was okay. So as, uh, as far as ending game is concerned, just to look at the the black side group here, if white plays here and black connects, uh, there's nothing happening here. So if white plays here, white does have to stop this. Uh, so this would be white's best end game. So like, uh, otherwise white can play here and eventually have the attachment here, a two point move, but it's better for white to threaten that. So whether white plays here or not, um, instead of the, the move at five, it's better for white to play here. And if black plays here, now this is going to be a Seki. So yeah, Seki would uh, take away a lot of black turkey. So um, if black plays here, black has nine points, nine points left. If you count the captured stone here, the stone that black captured, um, then it's a 10 point territory. Uh, in this case, white gets to take away the two points and keep center. So then white would follow up with this, and black pretty much has to answer all of those moves. So this is the way white plays the end game here, and it will be quickly, it's, it's easy. 
So, and let's say it's again, it's the, um, the BOO meeting. They're going to waste time, um, spending 40 seconds on each move, but th like, this is something that players could play in five seconds. Now, so black played here. So that's a big move, actually. Where did white play before that? Okay. So if white had played here, so yeah, I was, uh, the one thing that I was wrong about was that if white plays here, black actually is going to connect up. So, because of that variation. So in this case, black is giving up uh, two and three, uh, almost three points here. So that's uh, two points plus the capture here, which is, again, it's the same thing I was talking about before with the co, where um, white has captured a black stone. Is white's one move away from finishing the capture, while black is two moves away from from taking it back. So. White is two thirds of the way to getting the one point. So that was two thirds of a point. So it's two points and two thirds, and black gets three points here. So it's uh, the two points on the G line and the one point on the H line that black got back. So it's actually better for white to play the diagonal move here. And black gets to play here. And so white's going to crawl. Yeah, so this was the correct endgame. So it was one point different. Yeah, so. <laughs> So now black has 11 points there and six points in the corner. No, actually, it's five points plus the code. So it's five points. So 16 points. I probably shouldn't count at this point. I'm probably too tired to give it. Probably too tired to give it a correct count. But it looks like black's a few points ahead. So they're going to finish the end game here. And all of that is going to be forcing for white. It's going to be sente for white. Um, then there's some end game in the upper right and the upper left areas. And that's it. Like they've, they've just filled the rest of the board with stones already. So like when you have a fighting game like this with a, a ko and stuff, quite often you just, um, by the time you get into a what you might call an end game, uh, you've filled up the whole board mostly. So it's just small end game moves now. Should be easy enough. Yeah. So black does have to be careful of his eyes. He doesn't want to be forced to. Um, play inside there so like for instance if he allows white to do this then he's going to end up playing here so that that would be a bit painful i think so yeah he can stop that by playing the target here and he's pretty much all right so like he might continue with playing this move too That's setting up some an in-game move on the side. So it's like when black plays, if black plays here next, um, it does sort of turn into a headache. For him. This could be tricky, especially when white is captured at four. But yeah, we'll see how that turns out. Sometimes black can just play directly here and take away the four points. So that is, it, it is a worthy move to be playing it through. Okay. And if black omits that, then it's bad. So um, if black plays elsewhere and allows white to play here, this is sort of a headache. So, because if black plays here, then white plays here and something is going to drop. So something here is going to drop. Also, black doesn't have eyes, so this is just bad. Um, otherwise, if black plays on this side, it's still bad. Yeah, whatever black does, it's bad. So this is just bad. Um, black is pulling apart. So black doesn't want to leave it here. And it's going to add that stone there. This does set up the endgame move at B, B6.
eventually black will have to play at m17 so given that it's still 11 points there he has because you count the captured stone as to an extra point Okay, so they're left with the end game sequence in the lower left corner, which is probably just forcing for white. And then some end game in the upper left corner. And that move at um at R4 it's it's actually pretty big. But it might be more important to play in the upper left. I don't know about that. They're about the same. Okay, so white played in upper left. And black is going to get the R4, R4 point. Yeah. And then he's going to get the point at uh, on the left side, B6. So those are the two important points left. Lower left corner, that's about, that's almost two points at Sente for white, but it's more or less equal to black's play at b6, so it's the same thing. Yeah, so this is big, because it gives black a, a Sente endgame play in the upper right corner next. So if black plays at um, s3, that's a, a three-point difference, and it's Sente. At this point, I just want to watch the game uh, come to an end. So uh, I'll, I'll just watch them finish the end game. I think Black has probably a couple of points lead, but I could be wrong. Yeah, so now White, now Black is, is a uh, Asente end game that white has in the lower left which is worth it's one and two third points with sente so it's almost two points and it's going to be a forcing sequence that white can play at any point he's not playing it because there's a bigger move at b6 so if you can if you take sente uh two points with sente and compare it to four points with gote we usually say it's the same size but actually it's different because after black plays the four point move with sente I mean, losing losing a tempo, losing Sente, there's nothing left to play. So, like, the, the biggest move on the board after that is Gote two points. So, in this case, the Gote point is bigger than the Sente point, even though, even if the Sente point was worth two points. So, Black's going to play B6, and that's pretty much the final endgame move, after, after which White will play the sequence in the lower left corner, and there's a stone that White can capture in the center of the board, so that's it. Seven or eight before Komi, it, it sounds right. And that's a point, it, since it's six and a half, maybe one and a half points, two and a half points, something like that. I used to count these, but like I'm happy now that I can count my own games. I don't bother with people's games. Yeah, so here he's taking his time. There's actually, this is the thing I don't like about the old-fashioned Duyumi because there's no reason for Black to be thinking about his next move, and so it, it leads to what I would call bad habits.
It could be that he's thinking about the co on the top, but I don't think black has to do that. So that would be... Um, well, this co. And yeah, so black would be gaining a fraction of a point if black won the co and forced white to connect. He probably doesn't have to go that far. And actually, black is probably short of co threats too, so it's probably a bad idea. So we're finishing the end game in the lower left. That's going to be forcing. That black's going to have to answer that. Okay, uh, Naf is asking about the time control. Um, in this, uh, you can watch the video. It's, this is going to be a video afterwards. I was talking about uh, the Fisher time control. So that's uh, something they use in chess. It's a, um, called the Fisher time controls. Uh, first suggested, apparently, by Bobby Fisher, the chess player. And, um, yeah, that doesn't do anything special. That's that's a, maybe a one-point move. Um which uh, gives increments of time. So like every time you play a move, your time increases. And it means that you don't have to do traditional Bioyomi, but you can use the time when you actually need it. Which is more, uh, I think it's more uh, efficient use of time. Okay, so that was a one point move. That was clever. Yeah, and black connected at a strange point, so black has to be careful here. Filling the liberty would lose a point, maybe. So black has to uh, cave in a little bit. Yeah. So now they're going to play, there's a two point move there in the center where white can capture one black stone. And there's some significant end game moves on the right. Um, so for instance, somewhere around um, O, O4, P4. And yeah, that's, that's a big move also. If white wins the co, it's going to add a, a point to white's territory. Black probably wants to answer that move. So if white wins this, co white will not need to add a stone at L. L5 is that, yes. So that, that's why this co is pretty important, yeah. Then there's the two move, two point move in the center. And black's move at, uh, let's see, is that uh, P p5 um that's bigger than one point that's actually if white plays there then there would be a difference in the size of the black territory so that's a two point move theoretically it's either two points or sent to one point so that would be the final end game and then there's the co in the lower left and the co that black doesn't want to do in the top apart from that it's just um it's just dummy points. Okay. So yeah, white does get to force black to put one stone in, but it's the same thing. Okay, so it's just the final co in the lower left, or maybe white will defend the top left first. So it's one of those two. Oh, that was a one point move too, excuse me. Okay, so I think black is gonna be short of co threats. Black has one in the top right and three in the lower right. And yes, 
if he's going to start so let's see uh, just leave it there for the time being white has four co-threats in the lower right alone so that's that takes care of all the black co-threats that i mentioned so far yeah so it looks like white has a surplus of co-threats black can make two or three co-threats on the top maybe black wants to try to win yeah he doesn't want to try to play the color at all so he's played safe and it's probably going to be half a point or one and a half points something like that win for black i believe so the best bet is to wait for them to finish uh the calculation here oh sorry i probably shouldn't be touching that yeah And when it's a half point difference, when you think it's a half point difference, you can watch who plays the final liberty. Because if white plays the final liberty, the difference in territory is odd. So uh, it would be five, uh, seven points, and white would win by half a point. But uh, white played the final liberty. That means that the difference in territory uh, is, is, okay, the difference is odd, seven points. Yeah, seven points, so it's a half point win for black, sorry. So white plays the final dame. The difference in territory is odd. Um, so it's going to be five or seven points. If it's a half point difference, it's seven points and a half point win for black. So like if you think it's a half point difference, that's one thing you can look for. So if black won by half a point, if one, black won by only six points on the board after you calculated that, it probably means you lost a, one of the captured stones. So this is going to be a half point win for black, I believe. And it hasn't been announced yet. Um, oh, actually, I, I can actually show you on the screen here. They finished the game. We can actually um, we can actually ask the computer. At this point, it knows. Oh, oh it doesn't. Sometimes it kills a group like that. So actually we have to make sure the group is alive and we can ask the computer to, to count it for us. And yeah, so it's seven points on the board. And to that extent, this algorithm actually works. So like, as you saw, there are some weak points in it, but when you give it a finished position like this, it does give you the correct answer. So um, turns out Black did win by half a point. And so I'll wrap up here. And uh, that's it for this. Um, and so Ding Hao won the LG Cup 2-0 to zero after out of three games. And um, so I won't be back tomorrow. But I will be back for the Nanxing Cup. So I'm, I'm, Yama is still um, active as the final Japanese player in the Nanxing Cup. That's a, a, a team tournament where each uh, Japan, Korea, and China each um, have a five-man team, and four of the Japanese players are gone. Uh, there's one or two each of Chinese Korean players. So that's probably going to be my next live stream later this month. I think it starts about the 20th, and it goes on for several days, so maybe most of a week. And I'll be trying... I'm not sure exactly what my schedule is, so I'll be back to get one of those games. Uh, so thank you all for staying to the end, and uh, goodbye.